80 games, 14 teams, and 250 plus hockey players. It's the 33rd annual Brick Invitational, and it all comes down to now two teams as the Minnesota will take on the defending champions, Connecticut Junior Rangers. Rory McGoran joined alongside Theo Tutkluck as we are about 15 minutes away from championship puck drop, and what a journey it's been through three years of waiting through a pandemic. Defending champions 2019 Connecticut waiting to try and hoist that trophy again. It's been three long years, and now it comes down to 15 minutes before the top two teams of the tournament square off together. We are back here at the Brick. We are back at the Brick. The 2012 is putting on a showcase all week with the 14 teams, providing teams all over North America, having a tremendous week. We're seeing goals scored, we're seeing great glove saves, we're seeing the camaraderie and the sportsmanship with all 14 teams and it's truly been a blessing throughout the entire week here at the Ice Palace at West Edmonton Mall. Well, it is Team Minnesota, basically a team that looked to go undefeated. They were unable to get through Toronto Pro Hockey based off of a goal scored with .5 seconds left, forced overtime, and all credit to Toronto Pro Hockey for getting the lone win over Team Minnesota. That's their only blemish on their record. The most goals scored in the tournament belongs to Minnesota. On the other side, Connecticut Junior Rangers won in 2019. They won the 2011 birth year here just a week ago and now are trying to go for basically a three-peat. They are undefeated. No one has beaten Connecticut defensively, systematically, sound, play on the right side of the puck, defense, goaltending, and that top line. It's anyone's guess who's coming home with the Brick Invitational Championship. It's got two high-powered offenses, two really good defensive schemes. Really good, smart positioning by both squads. I'm looking forward to a great matchup here in Championship Sunday. And we'll break down the X's and O's coming up in about eight minutes time as teams getting ready, but you can feel the energy in the building. You can feel it all week. The fan bases have been great. Everyone around the railing here at West Edmonton Mall has been fantastic. The support, the staff that puts it all together. There's, there isn't a blemish on the brick. It was a long way to get it back, but you can just see it how incredible it is this hockey tournament and what it puts together. Not only the tournament of the two teams left here in Championship Sunday, but all of the teams still staying around representing their own home teams, watching to see who's gonna hoist the championship tonight or this afternoon here on Sunday. And before we break it down, one more piece I'll leave you with. How excited are you for the matchup between Jack Brayman and Jack Allgood? The Jacks are gonna go head to head. Finally, we get to see them play and it's gonna be an All-American matchup can't wait to get this thing started. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back with one of the head chairs and organizers of the Brick Invitational next here on AS. Here we are at the Championship Sunday pregame show. Theo here with ASTV. Joining me now is Chairman Craig Stiles. Craig, what a great week here back at West Edmonton Mall. The return of the 2012s, the Brick Invitational. What has it been watching these players this week? Uh, it's been it's been amazing. My initial thought was after having seen the 11-year-olds uh, that we would be in for a bit of a letdown. It's been anything but that. It's been quite spectacular. The parody and the team, so many one-goal games. Uh, quite amazing. It's been exciting to the point that when your game is done, these teams don't leave. They want to stick around and watch the other competitors and a great show of sportsmanship this entire week. Yeah, it's it's been incredible. They've been lined up here getting ready to go. And uh, uh, two American teams, uh, two great teams. Uh, it, it's going to be an interesting final. It, uh, I'm, I'm guessing overtime. You're guessing overtime, okay, that puts us into overtime as well. I love it, Connecticut winning the first week, the 2011s, calling this the, the three-peat, if you will, for Connecticut if they get by Minnesota. What is it about both games that you've, both teams, sorry, you've watched that you really enjoy, continue to watch? 
I love watching the coaching. I think the, the coaching is uh, so incredible on Connecticut, uh, uh, Minnesota as well. Minnesota were so close with the 11s, uh, a bounce of a puck, uh, and uh, they were in. So it's, uh, it really does come down to preparation of these kids for a, for a final game. All the kids in the tournament are within inches of each other, but uh, preparation for the final is something that uh, these guys are masterful at. We talk about preparation behind the scenes for the brick group the executive yourself the volunteer group how much preparation does it take to put on a tournament like this not just for one birth year but now two birth years this special year coming back from our break yeah this i mean this year right now today the excitement is we only have to prepare for one year next year <laughs> it's been uh, it has been uh, a lot and there's no question for for everybody I mean, everybody pulled together we we started preparing for this in uh, march april uh, for the double tournament, uh, for next year's tournament, we'll start in September, and we'll be well on our way. We introduced the new uh, uh, Brickley Showdown today, uh, prior to the game, and that went over really, really well. So uh, we'll do some fine tuning and refinements on that, and uh, get get ready to put on a great show next year as well. The first annual Brickley Showdown playing earlier this morning. Good showing by all the teams. I really like that format, the Wigston versus the Styles. I never asked, how did you come up with the two names of the different divisions? Oh, I, I, I think one of the volunteers said that would be something to do. So we probably will change that for Brickley okay. next year. But uh, it was just something that uh, came up for, for ease of trying to figure out uh, uh, in the regular round robins, uh, which team is which team, what do you call it? So uh, we kind of went off a bit of the NHL uh, old fogies. So. <laughs> it, worked, it worked well. Lots of great talent showing off this morning. Any, uh, I've got a lot of sponsors here, a lot of people you'd like to thank. Uh, the floor is yours, Craig. Who would you like to thank uh, oh. for this tournament and the two weeks that have been put on here at West Edmonton Mall? Well, obviously, the Brick are a big part of all of this uh, happening, and uh, their continued support is great. And without West Edmonton Mall, this venue, uh, the cooperation that we get from them in every sense of the imagination, uh, they're there with us all the way through. Uh, Flexity was a great sponsor for us this year and we just there's just so many you'll see around the boards all of our uh, platinum sponsors uh, th that have come to the party and they do every year uh, just got a great amount of uh, cooperation from them and then you know second thing is our volunteers not just our committee uh, volunteers but all the people that sit in the score uh, doing the scoring or doing the goal judging or uh, doing the running the team reps there's, a, there's an army of people, but it all has to work together. And, you know, with Sonny Seacon and uh, Russell uh, managing operations here, and Zach Turner was uh, here for the most part. They do a, a wonderful hands-on job. Last night was a, a spectacular event. It was the beach party. And we, we initiated this beach party probably in the second year just as a, as a way to... Uh, eliminate the letdown of being here and being out of the playoffs and uh, there being a final tomorrow so what do we do now we do a competition and it was just uh, beyond belief how much fun everybody had the boys talking to them this morning certainly enjoyed the water slides and this, the light competitiveness of the beach party one last question i want to ask you craig before i let you go the wall where the dressing rooms are located that was something that was added this year how impressive is it but also looking at all of those names and maybe perhaps that the players playing this week and today might see their name highlighted eight right. or nine years later. Yeah, that's the exciting thing. Every uh, player that's played in this tournament is on that wall, and uh, we've underlined the, the, the players that have made it into the NHL, some close to 300, and there will be uh, many more to be added uh, this next year because there's kids playing right now in the NHL uh, and also ones that got drafted. So. Uh, I, I was quite amazed when I got here early uh, for the 11s, uh, the parents and uh, how much time they spent taking pictures around that uh, board. And just another thing that you know, we saw on a wall uh, in an NHL game, uh, uh, I think it was in a dressing room in Detroit and uh, going down the hallway and I saw the, the list of the players that had played here before and thought, hey, that's something that we'd, we'd probably uh, do very well to have. Craig Stiles, chairman of the Brick Invitational 2022. I want to thank you for all the hard work you and your volunteers have put on and a congratulations to a wonderful tournament over the last two weeks. All right, thanks for having us. And uh, you guys did an amazing job. The reports back from everybody is uh, 
across North America as being first class. Really appreciate the kind words. Thank you, Craig. Okay. We'll be back after this break. Rory and I are going to break it down, get into the stats, get into the players, get into the goalies, and it all breaks down before Champion Sunday puck drop at 12 o'clock here on ASTV. Yeah, I'm ready. Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall as the scene is set for Championship Sunday at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational. Team Minnesota against the Connecticut Junior Rangers. Connecticut looking to go three in a row here at the Brick Invitational. But Team Minnesota, the most high-powered offense, are going to try to dethrone the defending champions. You know, you look at the offense of both teams, and Connecticut certainly has had them even, more even but at the same time, the Minnesota has certainly had their offensive prowess, not just with their first line, but they started getting secondary scoring throughout that week, and it's good to see because they're going to need, both teams are going to need secondary scoring with the game plan and probably the scouting plans of both coaching, knowing what they're facing up here on Sunday. Well, we're going to have the battle of the Jacks. as Jack Allgood, the tournament's leading scorer with 18 points throughout the seven games they played, nine goals and nine assists, will go up against Jack Brayman, third in scoring with eight goals and seven assists. Sandwiched in between is, of course, Jack Allgood's line mate, Austin Jarvie. So there's a lot of high-powered offense here, but I expect both teams to be systematically sound, and we're going to see a close matchup here as Connecticut hits the ice. I'm hoping that both teams can come out a little bit loose, not too tight, and allow them to play each other's game plan because obviously those first couple of shifts, there's a little bit more on stake. There's a championship here it's at on the line. And each team is then going to have to realize, okay, get a touch of the puck, get a little bit loose out there, and then from there, get to your game plan and make sure you stick to it because there's been a lot of great storylines throughout the entire week. And the one most bigger than then, is the fact that Connecticut and Minnesota have done their job on both ends of the ice. Let's get to a couple of the highlights here, starting with Team Connecticut in their conference final win over the Toronto Bulldogs, and starting with Ryan Graves, start of that part line. You see him driving around the defense and firing a shot now up and over the shoulder of Christian Ariana. But Graves, Whalen, and Brayman have been as dynamic as any line in this tournament. You see them good passing, the good know-abouts and know-how on where they go on the ice. And then you see Brayman throwing it to some open ice for Graves to skate onto it. No doubter over the glove of Ariana and a great job by Ryan Graves. Well, it wasn't just Ryan Graves getting into the back of the net as it was also Jack Brayman. He had two goals, the second and then the game winner. 3-2 victory, Connecticut Junior Rangers. Now about this little backhand, he walks off the wall and fires it. That was a backhand shot. If you didn't know, and the velocity on that was absolutely insane. 
It was a beautiful move to the inside of the ice for Brayman. Brayman was able to come off there from the pass and, like you said, rifle it on the on the blocker side over top with the backhand and a great goal by Brayman. And Brayman wasn't done there as he added this one to his tally. And this was the eventual game winner. You see him get knocked down to the ice onto the knee after intercepting this pass off Pollard. Still pops up and the wherewithal to put it over the shoulder again. Asked him about the agility drills he did off the ice and on the ice back home. Certainly giving credit to the coaching staff up and down, off the knees, like you said, and then making a no mistaker over the glove. Well, Minnesota won four to one over Montreal as we turn our tails towards the other side. And it wasn't the top line of all good Jarvie and Kaiser that got it going. It was Maverick Shilgen, secondary scoring game, and he didn't have one, he had two goals, did Shilgen. Yeah, Maverick Shilgen on the first one there, getting it by the netminder, but getting a deflection off of one of the defenders there to get credit for that first goal for Minnesota to get him on the board. Now, he wasn't done there. He wasn't done there as he added another one, which actually stood as the game winning goal. He was the game's first star, four goals, two assists throughout round robin and playoffs combined. But that's what Minnesota's going to need. They're going to need a little bit of secondary push coming. We know the top line is as dynamic as any, but they're going to need the Shilgans, the Marooks, and everyone else chipping in. Here was Shilgan second. We're absolutely good play there, Bon, the two on one. Marook finding Shilgan on the side, on the back post, and he puts it in over top of the netminder. And a great job here by Marouk, spreading it out and then getting it right to him on the tape. Great goal. Well, they weren't going to stop the top line all game long as Kaiser got in with the goal, as did Allgood. And we'll take a look at Kaiser's. But Minnesota defeats Montreal 4-1 to one and really kind of imposed their will throughout that game. They had control simply because that team, the team they were playing in Montreal already played earlier Saturday, didn't have the gusto in the skates. But as you can see, it comes back to Kaiser. And then they play four forwards and one defense on their power play. Kaiser being the lucky one to play the point, and he goes blocker side on the net miner from Montreal. Well, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with anthems and puck drop here at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Championship, Connecticut, Minnesota, right here. Stick around. Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment and we're back here at west edmonton mall rory mcgorn alongside theo tuckluck at the 33rd annual brick invitational 80 games theo 14 teams 250 plus players and it's all come down to this minnesota and connecticut at the culmination of everything as we get the national anthems here. Down to ice level for tonight's national anthems.
Minnesota against Connecticut as the teams come and greet each other at center ice prior to puck drop, exchange gifts, and the championship will be a United States team represented for the third straight year, but will it be the third straight year for Connecticut or the first ever for Minnesota? As we spoke with earlier in the pregame, Minnesota could have done some a little bit of work on an unfortunate bounce on the 2011 crew last week. Maybe they have a chance to vindicate themselves as a, as a state to win this championship over Connecticut. It's going to be a battle of two great offenses, as we've said, and I look forward to seeing which one comes out on top. I want to thank everyone for joining us along ASTV all week long, all two weeks long. As we get the message of reconciliation one last time from Chief Willie Littlechild. How about the matchup coming from the two top lines? They've been the best lines here in the tournament, without a doubt. For Connecticut, Jack Brayman, Luke Whalen, and Ryan Graves. For Minnesota, Jack Allgood, Austin Jarvie, as well as Jack Kaiser. Just been tremendous offense on display. And as much as we talk about their offensive game, they come back and play, and they back check well, too. So it's not a one-sided game for them. They play both sides extremely well and support their defense just as much. As the ceremonial puck drop at center ice, you see Jack Allgood there for Minnesota. And for Connecticut, si Simeon Ogorelkov, pardon me. As Jason Chimera, of course, longtime NHL veteran, will drop the opening faceoff. Very cool to see having an NHL alum support these players. And as mentioned, it's always great. We had Fernando Fasani earlier in the week. A lot of the coaches are ex NHLers mm -hmm. as well. So the wealth of information that these players get and the experience they get for tournaments like this is second to none. Now well, one last lap around for Minnesota and their fan base who have been spectacular. Connecticut's as well. And there is no room around the railing here at West Edmonton Mall. It's Championship Sunday. And we're going to crown a victor for the first time in technically three years. And it's always the teams are all on the main wall here on the first floor and some are on the second. There's not enough room for everybody. And the fan support has been absolutely tremendous all week. And of course, the largest crowd here on Championship Sunday. Uh, just to remind everybody at home, there is a little bit different format today. Uh, for today's game, instead of two 12s and a 15, it will be three 15-minute periods in regulation. With, with a flood in between each one. With a flood in between each one. And then if it's nothing settled after 45, well, guess what? It's no longer a two-minute three-on-three, two-on-two. It'll be a 10-minute period, five-on-five. Five. And then it will go to four-on-four four if needed and continue to move down. Starting netminders for the championship matchup for Connecticut. It is Luke Thompson, 41 of 46, an 8.98 save percentage and a 123 save, 123 goals against average. And for Minnesota, Graham Olson, he's top 70 of 82 with an 8.56 save percentage. His puck is dropped, and the opening faceoff of the championship round goes to Minnesota as they'll throw it back in. Racing after its Graves, trying to dig it off the wall. Both top lines going to start. Kaiser twisting around in the corner. Poke checked off the puck. Picked up here by Jarvie. Back door looking for Allgood and a great breakup play there. That was the defenseman in Seidenberg. Seidenberg doing a good job there, interrupts, intercepting that pass. You're going to see a lot of players and a lot of teams, each team, trying to go back door as much as possible. Here comes Graves, one-on-one. -on -one. Shot up and out of the glove of Olsen. Miles Schillings will pick it up back behind the net. How good has he been? Seven assists on the tournament. Miles should have had more than seven assists, but <laughs> nonetheless... One of the best skaters we've seen for this age. Bouncing puck in, almost swiped towards the net. Now Schillings will just clear it into the corner. Maybe a little bit of nerves going on for both teams. As Olsen had one bounce out of his glove. Schillings now up the far side boards and cleared out by Jarvie. Jack Allgood, one on one against the defense. Allgood back towards the far side. Throws a backhand shot and this one wide. Another one off the side of the net by Kaiser. Jack Allgood. Leading to tournament point score with 18 points throughout seven games. That's incredible for a player to do such magnitude, as well as his line with Austin Jarvie and Jack Kaiser as well. Here all comes three. all good off the boards, cutting into the slot. Great pass, far side, shot Jarvie, and off a shin pad into the corner. 
Now bounces to the blue line. Hopeman will rattle one in. That one hit Brayman. And will be steered out by Connecticut. Kachatov off the glass and down low it goes. Kachatov going off for a line change here. Got to get Graves back on. They've been double shifted so far early in the first. Selnick rolling back into his own zone. Nice pass to evade the four checker. Up for Graves. Graves will go across. Whalen poke checked off the puck nicely by Christensen. So he played the opening two minutes here in the championship. One nothing to the shots on goal. Only one for Connecticut so far here in the early going. Graves back low. He takes a bump along the wall. Referees let that one go. There's no body contact here in West Edmonton Mall. It goes up and over the railing, and we're going to stop it to play. 12.46 remaining. Yeah, Ulrich and Graves going out a little bit difficult in the corner. Graves, the receiver, have a little bit of body rub, but not enough for the officials to call a play. And like we said, also getting the first touch on the glove. That first touch going to get those nerves calmed down a little bit. Going to need a stellar goaltender performance by both. You can kind of see it. There's a bit of a feeling out process. These, ha these teams are in opposite divisions and haven't played each other all tournament. It's interesting to note that because the scouting report seeing them play other teams within the division isn't the same as actually playing them now that they're in different squads. Yeah, you can watch the film, but until you line up against them, how about that pass by Schillings? Breaking in on a two-on-one, fires and stopped by Thompson. That's the vision we've been accustomed to see from 97 on the blue line there of Minnesota. Schillings goes about 75 Beautiful. feet long with about three inches off the ice, so it can't be held on to. And tape to tape, <laughs> like Austin Jarvey, the receiver of that, takes it on and gets a good shot on the netminder from the Rangers in Thompson. I don't think even Jarvey knew how good the pass was. That actually led him onto a two-on-one. He was, you know, committed to the shot from a long range, but he had an opportunity to fire it across the pass. Nonetheless, good shot on net. Luke Thompson made the save. Absolutely. Back in towards the defense. It is Allison, D to D, back into the corner. Just being told by producer Cody here as play goes down inside the wall that Miles Schilling out in front. There is Shilgin, and it's on the pad of Thompson covering up. Miles Schillings is a 2013 birth year. He's playing up a year, and he's one of the defensemen of the tournament for sure. I don't. I mean, I do expect his name to be called on one of the either the first or second All-Star teams that were put together last night. But he is a 2013 birthday. He can play next year. That just makes it that much more impressive for 97. Back door, all good, and it rolled off his stick. That's incredible. I did not know that. As Graves goes across. Scooped up by Jarvie. Looking to throw that back in the zone. We got 11.45 left here in the first period of the championship. Graves. Back towards Hare, he'll steer it up, intercepted Graves, all good, trying to strip it back. Good battle there as supporting came in Brayman, now up through Whalen. Graves poke checking Kaiser off the puck, picked up by Whalen, but they're going to put themselves offside, a little bit of a messy entrance. And we'll get another stoppage to play here with 11.28. And the puck got stuck in Graves' skates there as Whalen was trying to get in his own, and then vice versa. Whalen let Graves go, but then Graves was offside on the play, so we get a stoppage in play. We saw that a couple times through the tournament last week. Braden Pearsall, De Placido, of players that were born in 2012 playing with the 2011s. So now you got one born in 2013 playing with the 2012s. And one of the top defensemen in the tournament. All good. Works it in. All good. Shoots this one wide. Rebound off Thompson and back over the nets. Plued at the corner. Fires a wrist shot. It'll rattle off the corner wall. Back up for Jarvey. Sending it down, all good. Trying to filter it back out to Jarvie. Rolled off the stick or skate of Hargadon at the line. Schilling's hard pass. Cross now, Plued down the boards. Scooping it up is Kaiser. He got met by Hargadon. Now back up, Kochetov looks for a return right back over and held in nicely by Jarvie. Toe drag, puts the brakes on, fires in front, and all good. Gave the defenseman a little bit of a bump there and no call on the play, but back out comes Connecticut. Starting to see some offense prowess inside the offensive zone for the Minnesota squad with those three guys getting some seriously good offensive time working the puck down low against Connecticut. Schilling shakes off the forecheck, now passes it up. Here comes Allgood. Allgood wide, drops, Kaiser shoots. This one just wide on the far side. That was a great looking shot. Just seeing eye shot missing the far post using the two Connecticut players as a screen. Another chance for Kaiser. His shot is hemmed up on the back check. That was, I believe, Jaden Wyden. 
Or is it King? It's Dominic King. He'll go across to Ogorelkov. Fires. Olsen punches that out and now jumps on the rebound. And we'll go to the offensive zone. Draw for Connecticut. Shots on goal. 3-2 Minnesota. Still scoreless as we're five minutes into the first. Olsen takes the first one off the glove. Takes the second one off the blocker. Next one maybe off the pads. And then we should be all set to go as Olsen's made two stops so far, keeping it a 0-0 game. Whalen against Christensen. Sorry, Williamson. Into the corner, Hare will throw it around. Stuffed up along the wall by Christensen. Brayman waiting outside, Whalen digs it free. Brayman trying to get to it, can't, back out. And here comes Chatlin, Chatlin shot. Great back check by Graves. Graves will turn it back around, working it wide. Graves fires, blocker save. That one, Olsen, a big one. Had to make that save, it was labeled for the far yep, post. Absolutely, that would have went off the post and in. He's breaking it back out again. Defensive side play by Connecticut is unbelievable, and it starts all their offense from the right side of the puck. On the defensive side, they force turnovers and then create offense that way. Both teams really keep control of their defensive uh, gapping on the forward plays of the opposing team. Here's Kachatov now with a backhand shot into the glove of Olsen and back out around the net. Connecticut with a little bit of push here in the last minute and a half. They're getting the single shots, and they're not getting the rebounded shots because Olsen's been able to hold on to the rebounds. Kajitov fires, it's blocked in front, spinning and widen, and this one blocked by Schillings. Schillings will dig it out of the corner, roll it on the glass, pops down towards the blue line and knocks back in. Schillings, around a hair, D to D, now up ice, Chatlin. He'll send it across. Williamson fires it in. Minnesota wants a line change. Yeah, they got hemmed in there for a good minute or so. They need to get a fresh legs out there for the team in green. Kachitov turns it over. Schilling sends it back in. On it here is Selnick. It'll be shimmied up the wall, but Plude holds it in. Selnick now. Kachitov. He'll send it all the way down. This is going to be icing against Connecticut. But of course, at this age in Alberta minor hockey, icing, you can still make a line change, so they'll get a fresh five on the ice as well. The only bad part about the icing is that you're allowing the other team to set up an offensive set play, perhaps, in their offensive yep. zone. So that's the only drawback of the, off the icings here with Alberta minor hockey rules. But nonetheless, Connecticut Junior do have a fresh five out there. 8-18 left in the first period. Still scores, it bounces dangerously in front of Thompson. And that will be peeled away by the Junior Rangers. In comes Bell. Bell, high slot, wrist shot well over and whistles past a couple spectators close to the Minnesota fan base. Deciding to wear the all yellow. They're always decked out in something entertaining for <laughs> Team Minnesota. It's bright out there. Not the sun from the dome, but the fans today are wearing the bright yellows. Coaches as well of Team Minnesota constantly have Interesting get-ups. Coach S, the best dressed so far, according to the players on the Minnesota bench. Face-off 803 here in Minnesota territory. As both teams still tied at zero. Back towards Ulrich in the corner. Schilling's going to help him out. Bell trying to hold it in for Connecticut. He does. Back around the net. Now Plude will work it up the near side. Stretching it to Shilgen. Unable to connect there with Ulrich. It'll roll back into the Connecticut corner wall. And played back up to the far side boards. Bell has Robertson. Minnesota the works it off the wall. Marouk almost got towards the net. And Thompson, Ulrich with a little bit of a push there. But Thompson's been strong as prior to this tournament. Thompson's coming in, stopping 41 of 46. And now he stopped the first five. Now Thompson had to be quick with that cover up because this line that just getting off with Ulrich, Shokin, and Marouk have certainly woken up here, especially in the last game with Shokin getting those two goals and getting good assists from both of his forward line mates. That's that secondary scoring we talked about. Here's Jarvie trying to work it back in. You saw that set play off the faceoff again. Minnesota uses it a lot. As Kaiser tries to push it forward, all good goes right to the far post and then that pass comes across. Connecticut recognized at that time and broke up the passing attempt. Is that scouting report we're talking about? That push forward and then all systems ahead. Back up all good. He's got Kaiser with him. All good in. All good. Shoots. This one stopped by Thompson. Glove save. Stopping the most potent score here at the Brick Invitational. That's one player you don't want to give a lot of room to in Jack Allgood. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Luke Thompson had to be very wary 
He was sitting on that close post a little too close, and that glove side was wide open. All good saw that, but Thompson's got flashing of the mitts, and he makes the glove hand save. It was as smooth as a glove save you see. Just calm, got it. Maybe bathed him a bit to take that side. Perhaps took, that's took the it, thing. Took it away. The, yeah. Now battling into the corner is Maruk. I think back on this line with Ulrich out in front. Loose puck and Thompson will be helped out by the defense. In Charles and steered back out to center. You mentioned a secondary scoring for Minnesota. All three of them had a two point game. Maruk, Ulrich, and Shilgan. Long shot in, Thompson will make the save. He's been busy in the first period, seven shots faced. Seven shots faced, not many rebound chances there for the Minnesota team. And that's probably because, well I know it's because, Thompson's either covering it, and if there is a rebound there, the Connecticut Junior Ranger defensemen are first to the loose puck to either clear it to the outlet pass or at least get it to the sidewall. Now broken out by Connecticut. Here goes Ogorelkov. He's got Bernhardt with him. He's trying to steer through three Minnesota jerseys. Knocked free by Allgood. He gets stuffed up at the blue line. Sent back in by Fitzgerald Brown. On the near side, Selnick. Cross ice, a chance here, and under the stick of Ogorelkov, or pardon me, that's, yep. yes it is Ogorelkov, thought Seidenberg maybe. Well, Bell gave him the pass, just couldn't hold on to it for a shot. Now, all good, looking to bounce that one, back out of the zone, does, it's sent right back in by Bernhardt. Two players collide with each other, it's all good in Bernhardt. Bernhardt trying to get off the ice for a line change, and Plude will break back in, down the left, nice little move to get through, and Kaiser now a chance, and that one will knock off his stick. And then clearly picked up by Whalen and turned around the other way. Luke Whalen, unable to get through all good. How about the defensive support for all good? 200 foot game for him as he was actually the last defenseman back after being the forward breaking into the zone. Yeah, we're seeing how each team is picking up the loose pucks and returning the play back into the, uh, their respective offensive zones. A great concept and a great strategy for both teams obviously as they want to spend more time 150, 200 feet away from their own net. Eight to three, the shots on goal favoring Minnesota. Williamson will win it back. Hopeman, Hare, up top, Chatlin, nice little centering pass, trying to filter it through to Williamson. And getting in the way was Whalen. Top line out for Connecticut, Whalen finds it, but accidentally puts it inside his own bench, and we'll get another stoppage of play. We have 5.20 left in a scoreless first period here in the championship. It'll be actually coming outside the zone, deflected by Williamson and Christensen on the far wall into the Junior Ranger bench, so face off in the neutral zone. Williamson, Christensen, now back to the defense, Holtman. Holtman maybe one we haven't been talking about enough and we should be. Very solid on defense, good body position, staying between him and the goal scorer, or the shooter, sorry, uh, all the time to help out Olsen or, or Brockta in the pipes to block the shot. Walking out and looking upstairs was Ogre Elkov, or Kachetov, mind me, and that one will be worked back out of the zone. Kachetov still looking for his first goal here of the tournament. As he's got two assists, but he's all around the net constantly. Talk about his, you talk about Schilling's smooth skating. There he is there, Kajitov into the slot, shoots off the post, off the back of Molson, and he looks skyward. Well, we almost had the broadcaster blessing there, as I said, Kajitov looking for his first goal and finds iron. He's been very impressive with his skating. He's very good on his edges, quick to grab the acceleration on the turn, and we saw there as he picks up the loose puck, makes a quick turn, the C turn, and gets a shot off the post, just could not beat the iron behind Olsen. We're gonna back behind the netminder. Was Bell helped out by King. And this one now will be lifted back out to center ice. Sent in by Allison. As Schillings leading Shilgen up ice. Shilgen now with a little bit of a lane down the right. Will steer a backhand. It rolls back behind the net. Looking for the game's first goal. We have 4-10 left in the period. Back out comes Bernhardt. Three on two for Connecticut. Bernhardt wide, drops, it's Jarl, and it's broken up by Marouk, but Olsen has to be careful as it bounced briefly off him, and then he gathers it back. Good for to see Jarl there jump up into the play, recognizing that he can get an odd man rush, and that shot though, just not a lot on it, rolls on to Olsen. Yeah, Jarl needed to continue to skate with Bernhardt because if he, he stopped skating as soon as he hit the blue line, thinking Bernhardt was gonna take the shot, the pass came back to him, could have been a lot harder if he's allowed to keep that spacing between the Minnesota back checker. 
Under four minutes here in the first period. We'll have a flood in between every period of the championship as Schilling's off the wall, intercepted by Brayman. Schilling's will pick it back up. Whalen trying to work on him. Whalen now out in front, and Hare will clear it around. Near side, Selnick. Playing it back down the boards, all good. Couldn't get it out of his zone. Helped out, now Hare will stretch it far side and picked up by Austin Jarvie. Snaps it in, all good after it. Kaiser after it. Selnick for Connecticut. Two players will run into each other, that's Kaiser and Selnick. Now steered up the near side boards, Graves on it. Dusting it off, in across center ice. Graves will snap it in. Back around the boards into the corner, here's Hopeman. Intercepted, it's Hargadon in a low backhand, stopped by Olsen. What a jump into the gap by Hargadon. Hopeman looking to, they're calling and it a they're goal. they're calling this a goal as a delayed response from the referee, but it's Andrew Hargadon, one nothing Connecticut. Hopeman trying to go through the middle of the ice there, intercepted by Hargadon, and it looked like it got underneath Olsen's pad, but after further review, they found the puck inside the post over the goal line. So Hargan is going to get credit for the first of the game here to break the deadlock. A little bit of controversy here in the Brick Invitational. Now the goal judge is coming out. He looks like he's shaking his head no. So we're going to have a discussion with the I officials. I know, this there. is wild. Why not add it to the championship? Now the referees are going to go back and take a conversation with the goal judge. We're going to try to peel that replay out for you and find out if Hargadon did beat the goaltender or not. Did we get the back camera angle there, Cody? We did. He's nodding yes. We'll take a peek at this. It looked like it was under Olsen's pad. And then when I the thought whistle, he saved it. I thought we saved it too. And the whistle went. Right. But then as he moved away from the goal post, they saw that the puck was actually behind the goal line. And we see a lot of the fans here. And they're pointing, good goal. It's Connecticut one, Minnesota none. 3.06 left here in the first period. Wow, Hargadon, and I guess that jump did pay dividends as he stripped the puck and worked it in. And it beat Olsen on the sixth shot of the game for Connecticut. Wild. Off the ensuing faceoff, we'll have that replay for you on the next stoppage of play. Wide in with it. We'll send it in, Schillings. Perfect stretch pass again to Chatlin. Chatlin fires. Thompson makes the save. This consistently blown away by the play of Schillings, an underage kid playing, and that vision he has and the passing ability from the blue line. No, he's made two really good stretch passes, but Connecticut Junior Rangers are sitting that back checker or the four checker a little bit higher to wait for that pass, and they're going to get accept more of them as the game goes on, I'm sure of it. But Schillings waiting to make sure there's no... And we're getting a bit of a this discussion. They're going to wave out Williamson. In comes Chatlin. It's Williamson, Chatlin, and Christian. Now Christian's is actually going to come in, and he wins the draw cleanly. Plude across to Schillings. Schillings shot that one blocked. Andrew Hargadon. This is going to be an unassisted goal too. He's back into his own zone as Schillings. D to D, off the wall. Now Chatlin battling Ogorelkov there. Allison, it'll work it back to the defense and Seidenberg. Seidenberg up the wing, off the bench is Brayman. Brayman now picking up some steam through neutral ice. Here he goes, one on four, dipping down the right. Brayman stops up, puts on the brakes, up for Allison. That one got blocked away by Chatlin. Still on it's Brayman, now finally knocked off the puck. He's trying to dig it free. Williamson steers it around the boards but Jaro will hold momentarily covering his graves nice little play by the forward to recognize that here's getting the jump though Williamson does he have a step on Selnick he does Williamson in stopped by Thompson great looking shot there to the far post along the ice and Thompson sticks out the pad to make the save and the and Connecticut the fans doing down. the Luke chant <laughs> you gotta love the support from each fan bases absolutely tremendous support not just from the hometowns of each team playing but also the respective teams sticking around from the entire tournament. Well, you can see all the teams, Manitoba, Detroit, Boston, of course, everyone's around the railing here. Andrew Hargadon looking for a little more. Slides it in front, Kochatov scores! What a pass by Hargadon, and Nikita Kochatov has his first in the tournament. 
It's two, nothing, Connecticut. Andrew Hargan and taking his big body frame to the forehand and around he goes the defenseman. And Kotsitov looked like he was being marked, but then he sneaks inside that defenseman in Schillings and he's able to tip that in for a two nothing score for the Junior Rangers here as they get two before the end of the first. Let's take a look at the goal by Hargadon to see where this puck went in the net. This is the first one. As he stripped that puck, worked it in. And so that's a good goal. It you gets pinned against yeah. the post and the pad of Olsen. And that's yes, a good it goal. did cross bounced, the red line. It yeah. bounced off that pad and inside the post there. And good mark by the goal judge on the far side. And then Nikita Kachetov. Well, we said it earlier, looking for his first goal of the tournament. He's been all over the net. And he paid dividends there. But Andrew Hargadon having himself a game. Marouk will work it wide. So you got one minute left here in the first period. It's 2 nothing, Connecticut. Back comes Brayman. His shot off a stick of shillings and up and out of play. Brayman trying to get a shot on that. A good, another, keep putting the pressure on Minnesota here as they haven't had a chance to make an answer. Several single shots against Luke Thompson, just not at a sustained pressure. Well, we always talk about the top line for Connecticut. But Andrew Hargadon, these are the type of players you need to win championships. Two points in this game. He had four points total in the round robin. Goal and assist now on touching both the goals of Connecticut. Kaiser will take it against Whalen. Kaiser getting waved out. In comes Allgood. Face off drop. Whalen towards the wall. There's Brayman. 15 points on the tournament for Brayman. Trying to set it down. He had three points in that final game. Two goals and an assist. Now back in. Off the wall. All good. Can't get to it. Here's a chance. All good in front. Thompson, another big save. A little pushing and shoving between Robertson and All good. But he got left alone in front of a nice play in the high slot. By, I believe it was Kaiser. But he was in a little too tight and couldn't spin and shoot with enough velocity in that quick transition before he was pressured. Kaiser looking to throw the puck on to Thompson. And All good stops it. Tries to change the direction, change the angle of scoring. Thompson's pad gets in the way. Now another scramble in front of the net. As this one all good, bouncing play and gonna be knocked out by Connecticut. Here comes Bell, wide into the slot, shot, rattles off a leg, rebound and off the side of the net. Is that Hargadon again? Pardon me, it's Bernhardt in front. It's twisting and turning. The final seconds here are going to roll off the board as the puck in Minnesota zone. It took a little bit of while to get the game's first goal, but in the final couple minutes, Andrew Hargadon, a goal and an assist. One for Hargadon, one for Kachetov, and it's two in Connecticut. A lot of the players getting that first couple of touches on the stick, getting a first couple of shifts under their skin. They got the nerves settled. They now know how to play hockey. Of course, they know how to get ready to go. They're sticking to the game plan. The game plan is working so far for the Connecticut Junior Rangers as they set up by two after 15. Well, before we go to break, let's take a look at the goal by Nikita Kachetov. It gives Connecticut a 2-0 lead as just tapping it in. Maybe we can rewind that a bit more and grab a longer look at the work down wing by Hargadon. We'll try to grab that, but the first one, a little bit of controversy. It was in the net, 100%. The second one, no doubt about it, Andrew Hargadon was able to drag it around the right side, then find the streaking Nikita Kochetov, the third man in, and he makes no mistake, Here Hargadon, comes. all the work. And you see how he sneaks inside that defenseman there. And it was Hopeman, I thought it was Schillings, my apologies, but it was, he sneaks inside Hopeman on the back post, and he's able to get his stick on it before Hopeman has a chance to clear it. Kochetov with his first of the tournament. Well, Minnesota has high-powered offense as they have right now are losing 2-0 to Connecticut, but it's still anyone's game here in the Brick Invitational. Two periods remain. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll break down the second period right here at the 33rd Annual Brick Invitational Championship Sunday.
Welcome to Pilot Mountain Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mountain Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment Welcome back inside West Edmonton Mall. Rory McGoran joined alongside Theo Tuckluck. What a first period it was. It took a little bit of a feeling out process. First couple of minutes, 0-0 until about three minutes left in the period. And then boom, Andrew Hargadon goes to work, picks up the goal, picks up the assist. 2-0 Connecticut after 15 minutes. A little bit of a feeling out, like you said. The nerves are calm now. Now the boys are ready to play hockey. Second period going to come underway here just in a couple of minutes. But like you said, Hargadon goal and assist. That secondary scoring was on display. And that was going to be the key because we knew who the scoring line ones were for both teams. Both teams also knew how to defend or try to how to limit the amount of space those three guys are going to have on the opposing squads. Now it's up to the secondary scoring, and as we see, not only Hargadon, but Kajatov getting his first goal of the tournament, and what a good goal that was, sneaking inside the defense for goal number two. Well, you need that. We talk about the top line of Brayman, of Whalen, of Graves, but in a championship game, you need the secondary scoring. You need the Fernando Persanis, the Martin Jelenas, the Nazim Kadris of the, of the world to win championships, and you're getting it here from number 97. Let's take a look at a little of his handiwork here in the first goal and this was some controversy but again Andrew Hargadon did get this puck past the post and the pad of Olsen so you see it rattled in there it'll end up coming back out of the zone and then working back in for Hargadon he strips that one Holtman was looking to go right up to Kaiser up the right up Main Street and he intercepts that pass right on top of the circles and then as you can see right where Olsen's stick is there is the puck inside yep. the goal line and it is a good goal because the, pin, the puck gets pinned between the pad and the side of the net and un past the goal line. So it was, so it was a, And there's a delayed reaction from the referee. Whistle was blown. They thought no goal. And then Olsen peeled off the post and the puck was sitting in the net there just inside that far side post tucked under the back of the bar, I guess, in the netting. 
And it was a good goal. Goal judge then had to come back out. Referees convened. A little bit of controversy to start things out, but they did deem it a good goal, pointed to center ice, and it was 1-0 for Connecticut. 1-0 for Connecticut, and they did not stop there. They kept the pressure on, only allowing only one-shot attempts for Minnesota. No rebound attempts as we have a look here at the second goal. This time, Hargadon decides to take it wide, as he did before, and it gets stripped here no, at the blue line. And then here's Intelligence Hargadon. by Nikita Kochetov. See him on the far side. Now he's going to kind of get lost and cut back into the danger zone. The pass coming from Hargadon. Kochetov kind of takes that little C curl wide along the left as Hargadon's going around the right. And then as the defenseman is kind of having his attention on the second forward in, Kochetov comes back wide into the slot, becomes the third forward, and Hargadon hits him. One goal, one assist, and the Kochetov first goal of the tournament. First goal of the tournament, like we've seen all along this entire week, they're trying to go back post. They're trying to throw it across the ice to have the goaltender move laterally. This time, Kochetov gets a stick on it, beats Olsen. 2-0 game. Well, it's 2-0 for Connecticut. Hargit on a goal and an assist. Kochetov with an assist as well. We'll take a break. Have your full scoring summary when we come back, as well as third period puck drop here at the Brick Championship 33rd Annual on AST. <laughs> Welcome back here in West Edmonton Mall as Theo Tutkluck and Rory McGoran joining you. Nets pushed back into the crease. Zamboni off the ice. 15 minutes gone, 30 minutes remain. 2 0 Connecticut. Second period action underway here in a couple of moments as Connecticut Junior Rangers and the team Minnesota are waiting to get on the ice. What a great period. Lots of fan support, lots of cheering. 15 minute period. Saw some nerves getting settled, and then we see some scoring. Now we're going to see the response from Team Minnesota here in the middle frame. Scoring summary for the opening period of the championship game at the Brick Invitational. It was Andrew Hargadon and his third goal of the tournament, which opened the scoring. That one coming unassisted. Fifth point for Hargadon, but he wasn't done there. He then sets up Nikita Kachetov. First goal of the tournament for Kachetov. Third point and for Hargadon. Now his sixth point and third assist. Three goals and three assists on the tournament for Andrew Hargadon. Uh, shots on net, 12 for Team Minnesota. Luke Thompson's been exceptional, stopping all 12. Seven for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. And it is Olsen, the netminder for Minnesota, stopping five of those seven. Yeah, we're seeing Luke Thompson here making this primary save look very easy. Able to control those rebounds, which is very important 
because Minnesota, especially their first line, are looking to jump on that loose puck. The problem is there are no loose pucks. And Luke Thompson and staff have done a great job moving the puck away from the front of the net, holding onto the puck if needed for a whistle. And there you have it, a 2-0 lead so far for the Connecticut Junior Rangers after one. Well, Minnesota has not really faced too much adversity throughout this tournament. The lone time they did, they were winning the game 3-1, to one, and then two goals were scored with 30 seconds left and .5 seconds left before losing to Toronto Pro Hockey in overtime. So it's not like they were down in a game and had to really come back. They lost in an overtime. That's their only loss of the tournament. I'm not sure if they've ever trailed by two this year or this this week so far at the Brick Invitational. So we're going to see what kind of resiliency Minnesota can have. It is untraveled territory here for Team Minnesota. Like you said, the only adversity faced was in a four minute span and then an overtime against Toronto Pro Hockey. This is now earlier in the game. They are now a little bit behind. The question is, how do they respond? And the answer is gonna be seen here, whether or not their first line can find a little more space, a little more room to get the puck on Luke Thompson, but then also try to get some shots where rebounds are inviting and they can go to the front of the net and punch them in to get on the scoreboard. Well, what a feat it could be if Connecticut won their first tournament back in 2019, or pardon me, they had one way back in 2002 as well. But Connecticut back to champions in 2019. And then, of course, the pandemic and the halt of sports and hockey and all the kids taking away the opportunity to play in the brick. They come back with a double dose of it. 2011 birth year. Connecticut wins that. And now they're two periods away from winning again. What an organization they put together. They've been doing something good during the winter term here as the puck gets dropped for the second. Seidenberg now, Bremen. We got second period of play. His goalie switch sides. A little bit of a cloudy day, too, so sun has not been a factor here on the brick invitational ice surface in West Edmonton Mall. It likes to creep in once in a while. A nice long pass there by Seidenberg. Now into the middle. It's a trailer. It's Bremen, and he left the puck behind him. Gets it back, shoots, rebound, and kicked into the corner. Olsen able to get a piece of that with the far pad, just going past the loop, the far post to stay 2-0. All good, breaking it in. Leading score now turned back around by Brayman. Brayman down the left wing. Hargadon heading towards the net. Brayman wide, trying to center it. Hargadon in front, and that loose puck steered away. A nice play by the defenseman in Schillings. Now Jarvie. There does come the sun. As shot, fooled Luke Thompson a bit, went up the side of the net. So it is a little intermittent cloud, so it will be affecting Luke Thompson now on that far side. Partly cloudy out there, <laughs> high at 23 in Edmonton. We're not meteorologists or anything. Shot, stopped Big by shot. Olsen, huge save. It was Kochetov again. Kochetov looking to aim for that far post. And you watch the players for Connecticut here over the last several rushes in the beginning of the second. They're making a beeline to that back post because if they make a beeline to the back post, they can then quickly cut in front of the defenseman to get that tip like we saw Kochetov do on the second goal there. Uh, finding it back at the point, Selnick, look out, here comes Marouk, but he got knocked down. Did enough to slide it all the way back into the attacking zone though. Tolapala. Another defenseman that's just been silently consistent, maybe doesn't get the praise he deserves, is Christian Tolapala. Solid two-way player, head up, makes a conscious, fantastic decision with the puck for most of the time. If the pass isn't there in front of him, he uses the boards wisely to do the bank pass to find the outlet. Very smart player, and he controls his gap extremely well. well he's got six points in this tournament, all assists, so he's setting up from the back end, and bringing it in comes Dominic King. One goal throughout the week. King throws it to the net. A bouncing one cleared away by Minnesota. Another shot from the line. This blocked in front hit Bernhardt. Bernhardt trying to rattle it back. But here comes Schillings. Off the boards. Jarvie can't clear. Talapala holds it in. Following it down is Bernhardt. All good back for support. Bernhardt battling in front. Olsen seen enough. Going to cover it. Take a little breather. 13.09 here remaining in the second. A couple of broken plays there by Minnesota. You're seeing not only the forwards going and skipping in front of the defensemen. The defensemen are now pitching up and getting in front of their forwards in Team Minnesota to keep the puck in there, keep them hemmed in. We've seen the offensive forward door be a strategy that some teams use to recharge and get fresh legs out there while in the offensive bowl. Let's see if Connecticut does that here. Played to the wall and a little scrum ensues. Yeah, Williams in there, Chatlin's in there for Minnesota, Brayman and Whalen for Connecticut. Brayman will peel back up. Graves heading towards the far side. 
Bremen up top. Robertson slides into an open corner. Good read. He didn't really have anything. D to D or towards the net. Schillings will strip Bremen of the puck. Now shift off. Bank pass. Leading Christensen up ice. Smacked up for Williamson. Trying to get wide around the defense. Nothing happening there. Fitzgerald Brown boxed him out. Back in. Now bounced off a leg. And here's Williamson's shot. Off the glove of Thompson. But still covers it up and holds it for a whistle. Yeah, Luke Thompson is electing to stop that puck. It was probably going about a foot wide or so off the glove. Able to hold on to that rebound as one of those decisions he may have probably said, okay, maybe I should let that go, let my defenseman grab it, but we get a stoppage in play instead. Face off one back. Here's Hopeman sending it around the wall. Trying to chip it back out in front. Ulrich, an opportunity, Thompson. Another bad save. Another chance shot from Shilgin. Thompson the save. Hopeman will fire from the line. This one blocked. And Kochetov will head back the other way. Kochetov splits the D in backhand and rolls it wide, but he's going to draw a penalty. Nikita Kochetov, how about that burst of speed? We talked about his skating, his smooth ability to get inside and out, and he does that to Hopeman there. He just runs out of a bit of real estate as he gets hooked there by Hare in front of Olsen. So we're going to see the power play for the Junior Rangers. But such a good job, but not only does he make the assist, the goal, he blocks the shot in front of Luke Thompson there to start the play. And once he stops the puck there by the shot by Holtman, he moves up into the play and makes a great one on the offensive side to draw the penalty. Face off going to be steered towards the wall. It's plued. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management. As all the way back, knocked down inside. Connecticut zone. Kaiser shorthanded. He's got Jarvie with him. Stripped off the puck. And Seidenberg will work it back here for Connecticut. Seidenberg just sends it in after it. Goes Whalen. Plued up the boards. Jarvie on it. Trying to clear. Can't. Seidenberg now. Cross D to D. Robertson along the blue line. Will work it back down low. Whalen around the net. Into the corner for Brayman. It'll leave it up top for Robertson. Robertson. Brayman spins off the wall. Brayman into the slot. Shoots. Glove save. Rebound. Scores. Off no the off post. the post. It as Ryan out. Graves thought that one was in the net as well. It beat Olsen, but it hammered the close post here and bounced right out into the center ice, and the Minnesota is able to clear. No goal. Brayman back in. Backhand shot stopped by Olsen. Off the post. Ryan Graves thought he had it. Shot in, this one rattles off Schillings and now back into the corner. Off a of body, high slot. Well, we can pull the replay there of that chance off the post. Take another look, his back goes Hargadon. He's got 40 seconds left. Hargadon in, wide, Hargadon. Trying to go around Ulrich, drops it. This one, Kochetov had his stick almost fall out of his hands. Back up to the point. Talapala long wrist shot, stopped by Olsen, rebound. Everyone's down on top of the crease. Puck back behind the net. Trying to send it back out in front. Up for Hargadon. Hargadon rolling puck and couldn't get that trigger off. Is sending it back out of the zone onto the stick of Selnik. 10 seconds left on the power play. Opportunity coming there for Graves and then Hargadon in front as well. Here's Jarvie stretching, trying to catch some napping on a line change. Jarvie, toe drags, shot, makes its way towards Thompson as it rattles off the leg of Jarl. Thompson, another big save though. Yeah, absolutely catching that deflection off your head. Be careful with the spin on that puck. Now back around the net. King. And all the way up. And Bernhardt will send it in. Bell's going in after it. Schilling's back for it. Schilling's knocks it away from Bell. Laying it up on the far side. Shilgin will slide towards the circle where it's picked up by Plude. Chatlin couldn't clear. Williamson another opportunity. Forced back by King. On it. And breaking down is the defenseman in Plude. End to end rush. Plude trying to get wide around Allison, the defenseman. Finds Shilgin in a soft area. Tipped towards the net. Not yet on Thompson. Now cleared back away on by King. Theo, I think they're firing up your cookie ovens again, as you can smell it. And Minnesota trying to fire up the goal scoring here. They trail by two. Minnesota needs some goal scoring, absolutely. Getting a lot of those passes to the front of the net, but they're getting intercepted by the Junior Rangers. Smart to follow the players into the zone 
and then making sure they're marking goal side in front of those passes to intercept. Hargadon out in front, and this one rolls wide. Breaking it back the other way is Shilgin. Shilgin going to try to drive around Fitzgerald Brown. Not taken down to the ice, no call. Shatlin, Brayman intercepts, and he'll take it back the other way. Jack Brayman down the left wing. Hargadon heading towards the net. Out in front, loose puck. Here's Graves, shoots blocked in front by Williamson. Off of the far side, Brayman to the point. Robertson down low, nice pass, finds Graves. Graves out in front, Hargadon slipped off his stick. He was all alone in front of the net. Great setup by Robertson, an even better pass as we're gonna get a power play here for Minnesota as it's Hargadon who gets called for the trip. And you know what, they've put Andrew Hargadon a couple times now up with Graves and Brayman. Kind of done a little line juggling as Hargadon having a game with two points and almost had a third. We're seeing that time where they have two of those forwards getting that earlier shift change and keeping that sentiment either Whalen or Hargadon on the ice with the respective wingers. And it's worked well here changing up the chemistry but also confusing Minnesota here because usually, like you said, Whalen is playing with the other two. Hargadon's having a great game. He's now stepped up to work with some of that time in the first line. Power play for Minnesota. Kaiser will walk in. Rashad stopped by Thompson. Thompson was able to see that the whole way through as we get the loop chance from the fans as well. Kaiser, that fourth forward, playing the point there for Team Minnesota. They, you gotta think that they gotta get a goal here to break the goose egg. 16 saves for Luke Thompson. Having himself a game as well. Keeping it two nothing, Connecticut. This one will be poked around. Selnick trying to drive it out. Can't as he's forced back by Marouk. Jarvie tying up. All good, gonna spin it off the wall. Couldn't create any freedom and now dump down. This power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management. Kochetov using his speed to get to this loose puck here. Take off some valuable seconds. Here's Kochetov sending it back down. Hare off the bench. Got to be careful. Not too many men. It wasn't. Still four on the ice. Jaden Wyden will go up top. Shorthanded on the Connecticut Junior Rangers. Shot on. Stopped by Olsen. Minnesota needs possession to set this up to get down low for the power play. Now Kaiser. We'll take it wide. Here is Kaiser. Wide around one. Shoots Thompson. Another pad save. Out at the line, Blue trying to get one towards the net front. Can't, Kaiser looping on the far side. Circle, back door, in for Jarvie. Another penalty coming up. And they're gonna get a five on three as Jarvie gets tripped up. Jarvie, I think, got a hook from the defenseman as he was coming across the net. And it'll be Tilapia with the hook, or the, they're calling it a trip. But it'll be a five on three for 56 seconds here. Jack Allgood trying to get a little pumped up from his fan base here, going to close skating. And it'll be a timeout call by Team Minnesota as they try to draw up a play here with a two-man advantage, probably saving a goal because Wyden was coming across. And, sorry, yeah, Wyden was coming across. I like, I like the call by Minnesota. It's bold. Second period with about, what, seven minutes left or so? You're about halfway through this game. But you don't have your it late in the third, is, is what I'm saying. And you you're but your offense is stalling. You need some sort of jump start mm. here. You gotta put the jumper cables on. What better time with a five on three power play? If you can notch one here in the first minute, you still have a five on four, you notch a second one, you got a tie game going in here with the latter part of the second and the rest of the third. This is the jump start time the team Minnesota needs to get on the scoreboard, but also get some confidence and get back into this game because quite frankly, they just haven't had the space to really regenerate any offense at all. So 56 seconds left on the Andrew Hargadon penalty and Selnick now into the box as well. It's a five on three for Minnesota. All good, Shilgin, Kaiser, Jarvie, Plude. Four forwards, Plude the lone defenseman for Minnesota. Getting knocked down and trying to drag it out of the zone. Kent, Shilgin, near side, Kaiser, his shot off the body of Robertson. Falls right back to Allgood. Allgood now, top of the circle, working towards the slot. For Jarvie, now here, Kaiser, shot off the post. Great stretch pass there, Jarvie to Kaiser, but he finds iron. 30 seconds left at five on three. Plude lays into one, hits the body. Gonna try to dig it out of the corner. Is Kaiser, and it's chipped all the way down the ice. Two big block shots by the junior ages, one in Whalen, one in Robertson. Doing their job in front of the netminder, but there's a lot of seam there for Minnesota 
to go cross sites on the passes. Blue to Jarvie. He'll bring it back in. Still 12 seconds left of five on three. And then they'll have a minute just over a five on four. That shot hits the body and it settles right on Thompson. Makes another save. Luke Thompson, 18 on the day. Shokin was sitting in the front of the net there. Gets a bit of a tip on it, but it goes right down into the bread basket of Luke Thompson, who holds on to make the save. Six seconds of five on three. One back by Shilkin. Along the line, now moved across Kaiser. Far side, Jarvi. Jarvi. Plude has the trigger ready. He'll get it. Now out of the box, five on four. Tipped in front and just wide of the net. Looked like it was close to a high stick as well. It wasn't. It's back into the corner. Kaiser still in the power play for 53 seconds. Brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management. Into the corner. Up top. Now down the boards. Jarvi. All good. Shoots. Blocked. Kaiser. Chance. Another one. That one's blocked. Connecticut putting the body on the line. Shilgins down in front of the net. He looks really shaken up as he can't seem to get back towards the bench. Brayman back down the other way in front and not able to drive it in was Hargadon. Hargadon and Brayman now playing penalty killing time too. Shilgin finally gets towards the bench. So 20 seconds was basically four on four because Shilgin was in the zone and out of the play. Olsen's lost his stick in the crease too. He doesn't want to go down to get it just yet because they don't have possession. Now he'll go down and get it. But that'll, that'll about do it for the power play though. That's a great job on the five on three by the Junior Rangers. Blocking shots, getting in passing lanes keeping it a 2-0 game. Unbelievable job on the 5-on-3. As out of the box now comes Talapala, and we're back to 5-on-5. Five five. Connecticut's killed them both. 2-0, they lead. Now trying to stretch it down the ice, but it's going to be offside, and Graves is going to realize that. This is actually going to bring the play, I believe, all the way back in Connecticut zone. Yeah, it'll be a, they could call that one uh, icing as well, just out of the reach. He was offside too, but nonetheless, they'll call it icing. And just what a great job by the Rangers. I guess blocking, icing too, yeah. yeah the blocking shots, getting in the passing lanes. Luke Thompson only had to make one difficult save. The other save was up in the air. Probably would have been a high stick if it was deflected, but nonetheless, still a 2-0 game here with 4.50 left in the second period. Williamson. I believe that's Whalen or Hargadon. They're waving out Hargadon. They're, they're, I, haven't, I haven't seen Whalen. Has, has Whalen been in? Hargadon went up into his spot in the line, and... I'm not sure if just because of the penalty kill and the time spent on that, we haven't called 26 in a while, but I wonder if he's if we'll he got injured in the first period. We'll keep you updated on Whalen. I just don't remember seeing him in really the second period. We'll have a look-see. We'll keep an eye on it. Schilling's down the boards. Williamson. If that's the case, it's a big loss for Connecticut. Fitzgerald Brown. Hemmed into their zone are Connecticut. Kachetov. Works it down the wing. He's having a great game as well. Could have had two goals. Turn back around. Shillings will drive it in. Pass Wyden. Shillings now gets Hargan on pressure on him. Back in the Connecticut zone. We got 4-10 left here in the second period. 2-0 Connecticut. Dangerous pass in front of the own net. Now another one. Christensen trying to get to the bouncing puck. Hargan on. Christensen takes a bump from Fitzgerald Brown. Right towards the side of the net dangerously. And now steered out Kachetov. Floats it far side and Hargadon's in. Snaps it in deep. Back around Christensen. He'll scoop it up, skate down the board, send it in. Bernhardt and Jarl, the one back for it. Here's Jarl, Williams hit on him. Trying to steer it up near side. Back up towards the point. This one hemmed up along the half wall. All good. Williamson, Christensen in for Minnesota. It's going to be won by Jaden Wyden in Connecticut. Now he'll throw it across. Breaking out of the zone. Here's Bernhardt. Bernhardt snaps it in. Racing down for it goes Bell. Might be the first one on it. He is. Bell, great little rush there. And then eventually got taken off the puck by Ulrich. And up and out of play. Let's take a look at this chance from Graves that I thought went in because Graves celebrated. I think he thought it went in as well, but evidently hit the post. So there's the shot, and then it comes right off the boards, and it hits that close post right out in the front of the net. It was the celebration by Graves that threw me off. No, it was throwing me <laughs> off too, but that puck came out of the net a little too quick, and uh, yeah, it, it popped out. And I was like, man, that was a heck of a shot. Just couldn't get the inside of the net. Brayman, and there is Luke Whalen. So he is back on the ice and back on the top line. It's good to see you. Whalen now down, battling. Got taken off the puck. Now Graves gets walked around by Allgood. Allgood kind of 
chipping around the defense. Couple nice moves. He's got Brayman right on him. Brayman knocks into the corner. All good and Jarvie going to follow it up. Now Kaiser along the wall. Puck spills back into the slot and cleared out by Graves to Whalen. Whalen gets center, sends it in. 2.39 left here in the second period. No goals scored here in the middle frame. All both of them coming back in the first period by Connecticut. It's up top Jarvie. Minnesota going to try to change that. It's all good. Picks up the puck. He's got Selnick to take care of. Jarvie, all good. Unable to get that stick on the ice. Great lift by Selnick to not allow redirection from Allgood. Simply a good job by Selnick there. As Allgood was cutting inside, just Jarvie couldn't find him with the pass. That deflection would have been great. A couple players get tied up. That's going to allow Connecticut to work out with a wrist shot. That was King. But another stop by Olsen. Olsen's been strong in the second period. He has to be. It's 2 nothing game. Minnesota now has 17 minutes and 5 seconds left to try and get back on this two-goal deficit. It's more sustained pressure here by the Rangers, but yes, like you said, you got to get that second. They haven't got the second chance on Luke Thompson yet, how the team Minnesota. He's been able to make all the easy stops so far. The first saw it, easy scene. Well, the defensive structure from Connecticut's been really good, boxing out the forwards of Minnesota trying to connect on those secondary opportunities. Thompson's been fantastic, stopping 18 shots. And we're also but seeing their forwards come back and back check extremely well to cut that corner off and to not give a lot of room there to get that second chance as well. Here's up top Christensen, two on one, developing Shogun with Christensen, pass across, off the skate, rebound, side of the net, they score! Guess who? It's Maverick, Shilgin, and Minnesota's got life. It's 2-1. to one. A huge scrum ensues in front of the net as Shokin throws the puck in there, and you have all three forwards in Christensen, Williamson, or, or sorry, Shatlin, Christensen, and finally Shokin, and the puck sits there on the close post, and Luke Thompson just unable to stretch out that pad, and Shokin pots his third. I'm not sure why they're throwing hats on the ice. I don't know why either. It's not a hat trick. He did have two goals yesterday. Maybe it's his hat trick goal of the tournament, maybe, but still, that's something you wouldn't normally throw hats on. Yeah, it's his fifth goal of the tournament, third of the playoffs. So, <laughs> we'll put that one as a question mark. Yeah, it's Maverick Shogun. 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 Yeah. There is a T in his last name, but it's a silent T. Oh, the T yeah. is silent. Shogun. Yeah. Shogun. His back is widened, sending in Minnesota. Two to one now they trail. But they got another one here left in the final minute and 15. Back across, Kochetov. Backhand shot, blockered up by Olsen. What a finish we got in store here. One goal game in the championship. Jarvie will work it back out across center. Poke checked off the puck, Hargadon picks it up. Hargadon going wide, dipping around. Hargadon fires and up and over the glove side. Jarvie is that one rebounds right out of the zone. Jarvie trying to get around Allison. Nothing happening there. Great defensive play. Followed up by Schillings. Here goes Schillings. Slides it in around the boards. Well, Shilgen had two out of three goals for Minnesota. Or two out of four goals, I should say. And now he's got the big one here to get them back within one. Out in front, Jarvie stopped by Thompson. That might have caught the back post, too. 30 seconds left. As Minnesota putting some pressure on here late in the second period. Kachatov will send it in. 20 seconds around the boards it goes. Back around the net. Here's Schillings on it. Poke checked off the puck. Schillings battling. The little guy pushing up the forward against the boards. Now up top for Jarvie. Six seconds does he have a break down the ice. Five seconds. Jarvie, that's knocked off the puck and that's gonna do it for two periods of play. But Maverick Shilgin, with a minute and 18 seconds left in the second period, has broken the deficit in half, and Minnesota trails two to one, heading into the third period. Not only broken the deadlock of zero and got the goose egg, but more importantly, seeing some life in that forward group. Talked about the second scoring of Connecticut. The second scoring here for Minnesota has come to life, and it's brought this game to a 2-1 game for us here, heading into the third. And we'll take a quick look at the work from Maverick Shilgin before heading to break. And this was just a mad scramble in front of the net. Minnesota stuck with it. As you'll see Shilgin here, he had Christian try to feed to the cross, and then they just bang it away at it. He had two whacks at it, and on the second whack, he finally gets it past the pad of Luke Thompson. But that's something we had not seen 
from Team Minnesota. A shot on net that develops on a rebound and having a couple good whacks at it and then the forwards attacking that front of the net of Luke Thompson. That hasn't happened in the first 28 minutes of that game. So good to see that Minnesota's offense has come to life here at the end of the second, taking that goal into the third period. Well, we mentioned that after the first period when the teams came back out in the second, that Minnesota really hasn't faced any adversity in this tournament. As they trailed by two, and it took them a little while, but 18 minutes and 42 seconds in, that second period, or not 18, 14 minutes, 13 minutes, only 15 minute periods, as Maverick Shilgan gets it, and now it's Connecticut, kind of. They do have a lead. They shouldn't be too concerned, but that momentum has now kind of shifted to Minnesota with that late second period goal. That's going to change that discussion they're going to have between the second and third. Instead of being down by or up by two, they're only up by one. The Junior Rangers can't sit back on this lead. You're going to see Minnesota continue to attack. They're going to find ways to get to the net. They realize that that defense is now penetrable, and they know how to get into that front of the net to get the rebound goals. Take a break and come back here with the championship game. One period remains. It's 2-1 to one for Connecticut. On AS Welcome to Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment
Welcome back here at West Edmonton Mall. Two periods down, one period to go, and you can feel the energy in the building. Minnesota, a late second period goal, and it's two to one for Connecticut. It's just what Minnesota's doctors ordered was getting them on the board, but also cutting the lead in half. And then thirdly, taking the momentum of that period, a period where we didn't see a lot of large actions in terms of rebounds and whatnot, but Minnesota doing what it needed to do to throw a puck on Luke Thompson, get the rebound, and then get that goal to split it up to two to one. Well, let's go back all the way into the first period as we await the teams and take a look at Andrew Hargadon's handiwork. He opened the scoring for Connecticut. Graves throws it in, and Hopeman looks to pass it up to Kaiser right through the gut, but there is Andrew Hargadon who gets the controversial goal, like you said. And you could also see Olsen's pad go into the net and try to slide it out. But nonetheless, the puck stays behind the goal line. They do point it as behind the goal, and it's a one nothing game for the Junior Rangers. Well, the Rangers weren't done there, and neither was Andrew Hargadon, as he does more work down the right wing and finds Nikita Kochetov, third man in, who we mentioned kind of disappeared in the zone by taking it out wide to the left, and then hard strides into the slot as the third man in. You see 77 wide, now he drives in, and he got lost by the defenseman, knocks in that one-timer, past Olsen, 2 nothing Connecticut. That has been the strategy for the Junior Rangers forwards, the ones without the puck, to go to the back post. And once they see the play develop, move in front of the defenseman to intercept the pass, actually get the shot on net, and there you see Kochetov with his first of the tournament. Well, and then we had no scoring all the way in the second period until the 1 minute 18 second mark. And finally, Minnesota gets on the board, cuts it in half, and it was once again Maverick Shilgan. So the puck comes here outside, and the break, good breakout here by Minnesota. It comes wide to Shogun. Shogun then tries to just get a shot on net, throws it loose, and Christensen had the first chance. And there it is, Shogun with the second whack at it to make it 2-1, to one. and they go absolutely bonkers in the corner as they get the high fives from the crowd to make it a 2-1 game late in the second period. As we get into the third, it'll be a 2-1 game for the Junior Rangers. 15 minutes to play. It's going to be an exciting finish here between both squads. The All-American matchup here at the Brick 22 Invitational. Connecticut now going to be down to our broadcast left, and they almost made it 3-1. It would have been 3 nothing at the time, as it was Graves. You'll see this one, but it rattles off the post, and even Graves thought it was in. So the pass goes down low, and it's a shot by Brayman as he cuts across. Gets a pass from the defensive story. He cuts right across the ice and gets a good looking shot there. First saved by Olsen, leaves the rebound, but it goes right on Gray's stick, but it, we, it pops off so quickly that it hits the goal post and out, right into the middle, and then Minnesota's able to clear it from harm's way. So there we go, that's how you stand. It would have been three nothing if Graves would have potted that one. Instead, we have a two one hockey game between Minnesota and the Junior Rangers. It's gonna be an exciting finish. It's gonna be one heck of a finish here. A one goal game, 15 minutes remain, the 33rd annual Brick Invitational. It'll be Brayman, Graves, and Whalen with Robertson and Seidenberg on the point. It'll be Kaiser, Jarvey, Allgood with Plude and Schillings, Olsen to the right, Thompson to the left. Connecticut leads two to one, and the opening draw will be broken into the Minnesota zone. Out now comes Allgood. He'll go wide in towards the slot. Seidenberg on it. Seidenberg near side to Graves. Cross ice, Whalen has the lane with the shot. Olsen the save, but the rebound pops right out in front of him. And luck for him, knocked back towards the wall. Schilling's able to get that puck out of harm's way. Kind of caught him weird as the puck came back into the center of the ice. Graves into the corner, shakes off Plude, back for help is Kaiser, now poking the puck away from him is Brayman. Kaiser gonna get it back, up the wall for Jarvie, and out of the zone is Minnesota. Kaiser, Jarvie, has all good, but all good was a step offside on that entrance, and will stop the play down, 41 seconds into the third. I'm gonna use the word helix as they skated back and forth amongst each other, back and forth, but Jack Allgood was offside on the second last crossover between him and Jarvie to get the face off outside into the neutral zone. Shilgan and Hargadon straddling the blue line. Nice move by Wyden to get a little free. Now Wyden trying to do it again, and he got boxed off by Shilgan. Hopeman up for Ulrich. Back checking is Hargadon. Stripping of the puck. Helped out now by the defense, but he gets taken away in chance up top. 
and just couldn't filter it through as Shogun looking to get it to Maruk. Got deflected high in the air outside of the reach of Ulrich and Maruk in front of the net. Now Jaden Wyden picks it up, near side pass. Slips under the stick of Kachatov, but he'll follow it back up. Kachatov, wide, in towards the slot. Nikita Kachatov, and away too high up and over the plant, up and over the railing here and on a play. They're going to say it deflected off the Minnesota oh. forward there. That makes so more sense. Face off will stay inside the zone to the blocker side of Olsen. Kachatov again finding that scene, using his skating ability to get a scoring opportunity for the Rangers to try to get a two goal lead again. It will be a blocker hand, face off. Kaiser wins it. You're going to see a lot of this trio here in the third period of Kaiser, Jarvie, and Allgood. Whalen, Robertson, Brayman now. Steers off the checking of Kaiser, trying to get off the wall. Can't. Shillings couldn't clear. Poked up back towards the blue line. Now it's out to center ice. Allgood's going to try to pick it up and hops over a stick. Sent up Kaiser. Kaiser will work it down. Jack Allgood out in front to Jarvie and stick checked on the back check. Was a defenseman into Lap to Lapala. Graves now one on two. Shot rattles off the shin pads of Plude. 13 minutes remain here in the third period. Two to one the score for Connecticut. Digging it out of the corner. Trying to. Is Connecticut working? Now Graves backhand. Olsen a big save. Stayed close to that close post. Was Olsen not giving Graves the room as he was sliding across? All good. Dances in. Jack all good then. Got knocked free of the puck and back comes Connecticut. Two on two. Be sent in there by King. After it goes Bell. Center on the boards, all good. A long shift for him. And back up is Kaiser. He's got all good and Christensen. A three on two. Kaiser wide. Kaiser shoots. Stopped by Thompson. Rebound too far away from Christensen. And out of the zone. Now here comes Bernhardt. Does he have a step around Hopeman? No, Hopeman. A great defensive play with a poke check. Kaiser back the other way. Trying to lean on King. King gives him a couple shoves. Kaiser with it. Followed up by Christensen. All good. Still on the ice. Now it's up for Hare. He'll go across. Hopeman. Pass. Allgood trying to stay on side, and he couldn't stay on side. Did Jack Allgood just a bit early entering the zone? 11:54 left here in the third. And Minnesota will get a line change. Allgood doing a good job trying to watch that puck carry him off the boards behind him and lead him. Unfortunately, put himself offside. And we'll get a faceoff on the blue line of Team Minnesota. Hargadon against Williamson. One by Hargadon, sent in by Connecticut. Sun now back out from behind a cloud. Factoring in on both goalies right now as it's covering about 80, 90% of the ice surface. And working back out is Plude. Plude, upward pass. Christensen gets around the D. Here goes Christensen down the wall. Chatland towards the net. The shot fanned on it. Rolled back behind. Selnick battling. Christensen, Williamson back behind the net. Chatland as well. Here goes Kachatov on the near side, and Nikita Kachatov will bring it back out of the zone. In across center ice, Nikita Kachatov dragging, dipping wide. Kachatov stops back up. He hits the trailer off the bench. It's Whalen, but he got stripped of the puck. Christensen, then he left it behind him. Williamson will pick it up. Two on three as he's got Christensen with him. Now trying to join his Chatlin. Descends it into the zone. Hustling back for it's Robertson. D to D Selnick, back for Robertson in the corner. He'll take a look up ice. Lead King stripped, almost jumping on that one was Shilgin. Powered back towards center ice. Shilgin on it. Chips it off the boards over one of his teammates. Right onto the stick there of Wyden, trying to send it in. Connecticut trying to get a line change. Here comes Chatlin. Chatlin back with it, entering the zone. A long distance slap shot wide. Caroms off the backboard. Peel it off the boards is Shilgin. Maverick Shilgin back down low. Stick checked by Seidenberg. Now Ulrich off the bench is Marouk trying to find the trigger. Marouk shoots, blocked in front. Another rebound down is Thompson. And it looks like he kept that one on the right side of the goal line if you're Connecticut. And keeps it 2-1. to one. Marouk with the shot. He waited patiently to find the shooting lane so it would get by the defenseman. He's successful in doing so. Luke Thompson has to take the bottom of the net as both Marouk, or all Marouk, Ulrich, and Shogun trying to get that loose puck behind the netminder as they did in the second period, just unable to do that in this last round. Offensive zone draw here for Minnesota. Jarvie will take it. 
Watch the push forward play. Now back door. Exact same play. Minnesota's run that probably 15 times this tournament. And maybe connected on 50% of them. Almost did there. Shot coming. There's all good. Off the post. They're going to drag it into the corner. Bernhardt. Near side is Jarvie. Off the wall. And peeled back out by Robertson. Robertson will work it back the other way. Robertson across. One timer. Hargadon missed it. Wow, he laid into that one or attempted to, anyways. All good will scoop it up. All good now. Stripped of the puck. Back. Trying to get to Kochitov. Couldn't get a shot off. 9.38 left here in the game. Minnesota in their own zone. A penalty coming up as Plude absolutely rocked. Kochitov, I believe it was. Yes, it was. And we'll win a power play coming up for Connecticut. A little too rough along those boards. Plude did a great job intercepting the puck the first time, but he takes Kotchatov out and the board's pretty heavy and he'll sit down for two or less, giving the Rangers the power play here as the puck goes deep into the zone of Minnesota to the glove side of Olsen. Kachuk Advisory Group at Scotia Wealth Management. Kotchatov a little bit wary getting onto the bench, a little stiff in that lower back area. Hopefully he's okay to return later on this afternoon. Near side, Robertson. Power play brought to you by Kachuk Advisory Group, Scotia Wealth Management, Brayman, sneaks free, back door, it's in, it's off a leg and gets through Olsen. Nine seconds into the man advantage and Brayman makes it 3-1 Connecticut. Brayman makes a couple of nifty moves after getting the puck back from Robertson. He tries to go to the far wall and catch Graves who's sitting on the back post. It sticks off one of the North Minnesota's legs and rolls by Olsen along the ice on the glove side. Bremen makes it a 3-1 game on the deflection on the Team Minnesota player. And Connecticut now with a two-goal lead restored. With 9.24 remaining. Lead 3-1. Graves right back on the ice with Whalen and Bremen. Face off one back by Shulgin, a strip to the puck. Here's Graves with a backhand shot. Lots of time left in this game for Minnesota. They can score in bunches too. Back out comes Marouk. Nice saucer pass up towards the middle. Shulgin sends it in. Power play goal, nine seconds into that man advantage. Is it fooled Olsen? as Brayman was looking to go back door to Graves, but it went off a leg instead. And Whalen and Graves both picking up assists on the goal by Brayman. So the hit by Plude proves to be costly. Still 8.40 left, Marouk, he'll bring it into the zone. Marouk now wide, fires, Thompson stop, covers it up and he'll hold it for a whistle. Offensive zone draw coming from Minnesota. We'll see if they run that play again. They've done it about Seeing the playoffs throughout the two games about four or five times. Absolutely, and you see Shogun trying to go deep into Thompson. Falls over the net, Minder. He's okay to get back up. The, the puck was loose. Just got tripped up there by the Ranger defense. It'll be Shogun on the near side. It won't be run this time. Shogun wins it back now. Trying to get to it first. Doing so is Hargadon. Far side widen. In across center ice, wide and wide. Hopeman there, steering him towards the ball as the two number 10s come together. 8.30 left here in the third period. Three to one for Connecticut. It's back around the boards. Long lead pass, trying to hit Ulrich out of the reach. Turn back around, now looping is wide and wide and really shifty player, able to create some separation. Does there and gets it down the ice. Very good on his edges and good in tight spots as Wyden doing the smart thing, getting it deep to get the change. Marouk, backdoor slapper, this one wide. Looking for maybe a tap in on the back door, but he picked back up by Connecticut. Working in his Brayman, Brayman now picking up speed, using his edges, in front is Graves, and the pass in for Whalen. rebound, they score! Luke Whalen makes it 4-1, Connecticut. Jack Brayman getting some distance and some space around that defenseman. He takes the sharp angle shot on Olsen to have Olsen commit to the close post. The rebound ensues, come right, comes right on a Luke Whalen stick. And Luke Whalen makes no mistake as he pockets it in, making it a 4-1 game. This top line 
awakening finally as both Bremen and Whalen now score for Connecticut here in the third. Connecticut Junior Rangers now with a three goal lead as Minnesota has 7.45 to work with. Playing it up, stepped on by Jarl. Knocked away from Schillings, back inside the zone. You're right, it started off with Argadon and Kochetov picking up some slack for their top line. And then here in the third period, that trio come to life. Bremen a goal, Whalen a goal, four to one. Minnesota's gonna need a little bit more from theirs as well, as they're on the ice right now, but browering down through centers, Hargadon. Shot well wide in towards the corner wall, picked up by King, off a leg, Jarvie trying to get to it, kicks it from a skate to a stick, now gets hemmed up along the boards. All good, couldn't get to it. Near D to D, Robertson sends it in. Wrapped around the board, seven minutes remain here in the third period. Schilling's going back for it. Schilling's around the wall. 33rd annual Brick Invitational. Four to one for Connecticut in under seven minutes. Does Minnesota have one last burst of offense here? All good, what about offside? Nice little jump to keep on the right side of the blue line. Back around the net for Seidenberg. And just like that, plays it to the boards, steered out right through center, and Connecticut out of their zone. Smart play, smart positioning by Connecticut, making those passes look super simple to get out of their zone with ease. So around the net, here comes Ulrich. Kachatov around the net. Kachatov now almost caught that in front to Wyden. Shot from the point, a bouncing one. There's Wyden on it. As Wyden will be knocked off the puck. All good back the other way. Can Jack all good have a little more magic left in the tank? Got knocked off the puck. Great defensive play there by Wyden coming back. Just not giving the three stars for the Minnesota team any room whatsoever, and they just haven't been able to break free from that defense. Christensen powering down. There's a line change for Minnesota. This one will be caught up on the stanchion. Fished off by Christensen. Back around the net is Tilapola. 540. Here remains in the third period. Turn around. Christensen walks into one. Fluttering towards the net of Thompson. Thompson now has stopped 22 of 23 shots here in the finals. Doing a superb job in the pipes. Chatlin down the boards. He's got a little bit of freedom. Going to try to work it wide around Tilapola in front of the net. Loose puck. Minnesota trying to bang away. Thompson doesn't have it. And now he does. As the big body defenseman just trying to prevent Minnesota from closing in top of the paint. They did it long enough to allow Thompson to find the puck eventually. Smart move by Minnesota to throw it in front of Thompson. Got stuck in Selnick's skates. Unable to cover it. Massive people. Massive group in front of Thompson. Thompson makes the save to keep it a one goal game. Chatlin on the draw. He'll win it back to the point for Plude. Plude, D to D, that one almost caught the air and stick. Schillings fires, tipped in front, they score! Minnesota back within two, and it's Maverick Shilgin again, his second of the game, it's four to two. Maverick Shilgin, the second goal, the secondary scoring, doing the job there as a great shot from the point. And Great Schilling's, tip. The shot. Schilling's with the shot. The tip by Shogun. Absolutely great job there. The perfect placement of that shot. Right between the wickets, it goes on Lou Thompson, making it a 4 2 game. Still lots of hockey Tons left here in the of third. Tons of time, man. Tons of time. 5 13. Maverick Shogun, two goals in the, in the conference final. Now two goals today. Four goals in the last two games for the player. Absolutely great. Far side, Bremen, though, going to try to restore that three goal lead. Minnesota. Got to have a good shift here. They can't let momentum swing back in favor of Connecticut. They got themselves back within two. They're within striking distance now. Plude back in his corner. He'll steer around Graves. Prude going to walk it out. On to Ulrich. Ulrich watched by Jarl. Marouk coming in, but that puck rolls. Spins all the way out to center ice. Coming in to pick it up is Hargadon. He won the battle against Baruch. Hargadon trying to go outside and in around the defense. Nothing happening there. 4.30 left in the game. Turnover now as Shilgin back across the far side. Losing his stick was Ulrich. That prevented him from getting the puck. And Brayman will knock it back in. Gets it by Holtman. No icing is the call here. Holtman back over to Hare. Hare down ice. Maybe going to get a step. Going to be icing though is all good. Just can't get to it in time. The pass going a little too hard. Face off inside Connecticut zone. Let's take a look at the third goal now. It's 
In the next stop of the play, part of me will take a look at the second goal for Minnesota. One that got them back with the one, the shot from Schillings and the tip from Shogun, but we'll get the face off now in Minnesota zone. Late change there for Minnesota. Christian's got to go back off. All good stays on. Whalen. One back nicely by Kaiser. Now Jarvie hits all good in stride. Cutting into the slot all good and couldn't get wide around the defenseman. Here Robertson. Back for Graves. Whalen towards the net. The trailer's Brayman. Graves will just play it around the boards. On it in the corner. Looking to work it back behind the net. Hopeman though steers it around the boards. Jarvie will find it. 345 left here in the game. Knocked free. Kaiser will pick it up. Drive it in with some speed. Kaiser wide. Trying to take it around. Robertson. Shoot. Stopped by Thompson. This one cleared almost out of the zone and held in by Hare. Hare in. Drags. Fires into the glove of Thompson. He's going to hold that one for a whistle. Second goal now scored here by Shilgen of the game and the tip off the shot from Schillings. Goes across ice to Schilling. Schillings gets the shot on and then it gets deflected by our goal scorer. The second of the game, Shilgen right through the wickets on Luke Thompson to make it 4-2. Hargadon. Can't get it free from Chatlin. Chatlin will work it back up top. Here's Schillings at the line, and this one knocked free as it gets out past Plude. Now Schillings will bring it back in. Schillings touch Chatlin towards net. Long shot, that one knocked free by Thompson. Back out Shilgen. Shilgen works it wide. We got 2.59 remaining. Chatlin the shot hits the back of Selnick. Chatlin in the corner trying to play it. Wyden. Far side for Ulrich. Ulrich battling with Wyden. Shilgen on it. Steers him towards the boards. Peeled away by Wyden and knocked out to center ice. Great play by Jaden Wyden. Wyden doing the smart thing. Getting the body there but also finding the open space past the defenseman to clear the zone to get fresh legs out for the Rangers. Brayman at the blue line, turns it over. Now in is Schilling. He'll go to Chatlin, up ice, turned over. Back for Seidenberg, set back out. Graves going to race after a loose puck. Maybe a chance here for Graves down the right wing. Walks by Hare. In towards the corner wall. Be found by Shilgen back behind the net. Steered away by Hare. Hare scoops it up, plays it to the boards. The boards off the ice, or off the out of the zone, I should say. And now Robertson up for Graves. Graves whips it in. Back down low, trying to gather it. Two minutes remain here in the game. Graves jumps on a loose puck. Almost had it. Steered up for Chatlin. Chatlin working it, trying to drive across center ice. Minnesota trail by two. They're under two minutes left. Chatlin back in. Line change for Minnesota here. To the net goes the goaltender. Six on five as Connecticut going for it. Out of the zone. This one actually, and it is going to be called offside. Called by the back referee. It definitely did come out of the zone. Kaiser. Almost a break there for Minnesota. <laughs> break for sure. Kaiser coming with a full head of steam. Just could not get there before across the blue line. Looks like Olsen will go back in the net, so we'll have five-on-five five hockey still. But look for possession quickly by Minnesota to get Olsen back to the bench. So we have one too many. And they're going to bring Ulrich back to the bench here because they still need five. Now the goaltender was in the net. Olsen doesn't know. Referee's saying the goaltender has to stay. Yeah. And then once the puck is dropped, he can go. But the faceoff hemmed up. We got a minute and 39 seconds. It's going to be corralled by Connecticut. Taking it wide. King stopping up, trying to shake off Schillings. Connecticut doing everything smart and just throwing the puck in deep to get it away from their net. Here goes Allgood, and here goes Olsen. Back towards the bench. Six on five. Entering clean. Shot from Jarvie. Wide. Allgood back behind the net. Hargit on, on it. Off the wall. Schillings will hold. Swipes it back towards the front of the net. It's loose. Back behind in the corner. We got a minute and 14 seconds left here of the 33rd annual Brick Invitational Championship. Connecticut going for it. All the way down. Does it have the angle? Scores! Connecticut, 5-2 from end to end, has hit the empty net, and that might be enough. That could seal the deal here with the three-gate goal lead. What a, like that takes some talent to throw at 185 feet. I believe it was Selnick, and that Selnick. just made it inside the post.
as it looks like it'll be Connecticut for the third straight time. As Ogorelkov is going to come in. Pardon me, Obrakta, the goalie for Minnesota. He's going to finish this one off. A valiant effort there for Olsen. And back out, Connecticut. 48 seconds left, and I think Minnesota knows it now. The powerhouse has been taken care of by Connecticut. And you got to give all the credit to the Junior Rangers. 35 seconds. They're looking for more. A shot and a stop by Obrukta in the glove. So he gets his first save of the game. Face-off drop with 30 seconds left here inside the attacking zone for Connecticut. Taken away by Williamson. Now knocked down to the ice at center. Battling Allison. Peeling it off the board. Williamson. Hansen in there as well. As it'll be played back by Bell. 17 seconds remaining in the game. And an unblemished record for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. 8-0 in the tournament. And for the third straight year have gone back to back to back at the brick. The Junior Rangers are the Junior Brick Invitational Champions. 5-2 over Minnesota. A tremendous job by the Connecticut Junior Rangers. We saw secondary scoring. We saw primary goal scoring. We saw all three lines doing exactly what the game plan was and the play of Luke Thompson to keep it a two goal game facing 25 shots and truly a great showing by the entire team and what can't be said about Team Minnesota as well. Just the difference factor was the primary goal scoring. It's jubilation on one side and heartbreak on the other. It was an exceptional tournament for Team Minnesota. Truly a great tournament, nothing to hang their heads on. They had fantastic goal scoring throughout, great defensive play. And what can you say about the team in green that hasn't been said? Great to see the goal scoring as well as the camaraderie with their team. And certainly not the result they expected, but a great game nonetheless. Connecticut Junior Rangers, 2019 champions as they find their second victory at the Brick. In 2019, they've won in 2002. Then the pandemic halted everything. They come back in 2022. They win the 2011 birth year. One week later to the day, they've won the 2012 birth year. It's back to back to back, Connecticut. And what can you say about the, how they put this program together? Speaks dividends as they get the championships week one and the championships week two. Hargadon with a started it off with a goal and an assist. Kochitov got it. Then that top line taking over in the third period. Minnesota with a couple pushes throughout, but Connecticut and that sound system playing on the defensive side of the puck, taking care of their own zone and allowing that to translate up the ice into offense. It's led them to an unblemished 8-0 record here at the Brick Invitational. It starts on their back end, and Luke Thompson made all the saves necessary. He did get back twice, but more importantly, the rebounds got cleared away, taken to the outlet pass, and Connecticut was on the offense so quick, and they were able to do that with ease throughout the entire game, just able to get through the neutral zone, find the open ice, find their own existing players as well on the ice, and a great job by Connecticut the entire 45 minutes to make it a 5-2 win, capping it off with an empty netter by Selnick. Let's get to a scoring summary championship game. What a game it was, as we had a one goal one coming into the third period. Anyone's guess who was gonna take over in the final 15 minutes? And the Connecticut Junior Rangers, and we'll take a look at a couple of these final goals in the third period. A power play got the two-goal lead back, and Jack Brayman was able to find it, assisted by Luke Whalen and Ryan Graves. So it comes off the goal there, and it just deflects off one of the Minnesota forwards, trying to back check in the slot there. It goes right behind Olsen, and that makes it a 
two goal game yet again, three to one at that time for the Connecticut Junior Rangers. They weren't done there as Luke Whalen then got his first goal of the game, assisted by Ryan Graves and Jack Brayman. We'll get one look at that and then we'll get the three star of the game celebration. But Luke Whalen sealed the deal pretty much, put him back up by three and then an empty net. As Theo will go down and interview the three stars after the game, we'll have some Minnesota guys, some Connecticut guys, a bunch of players throughout our post-game coverage. And Jamal Mayers here, one of the coach of Team Chicago, former Chicago Blackhawks, of course, Stanley Cup winning champion with them. He'll hand out the star trophies. And Maverick Shilgin getting the game's third star. He had two goals in the conference finals, two goals here in the championship finals. And he was absolutely fantastic. Of course, it's a tough defeat for Minnesota. Your second star from the Connecticut Junior Rangers. As we'll go down to Theo, who's now joined with Maverick Shilgin. Here with Maverick Shilgin. Maverick, tough game out there. Got your goal scoring. How important was it to get the secondary goal scoring to help out your top line? We did good. Um, our goalie just made a couple um, bad saves and we just lost the game. A great job throughout the week. What was the best part about the entire week for your team? Um, just making it to the championship. We did great. It, it stinks that we lost, but. You guys had a tremendous showing, great offense throughout the game. Your goaltending was superb as well today. Great job. What would you like to send for a message for the rest of your team? Um, I thought our team did pretty good. Just a couple of bad mistakes, and they just goes into the net. Maverick Shokin, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Go enjoy the rest of the team. Thank you. There was Maverick. That was our third star, Maverick Shokin, with us. We'll send it up back to Rory. Thanks, Theo. There was Maverick Shokin. Of course, tough situation for all the Minnesota players, but a hard-fought tournament. As the second star of the game was announced as Luke Thompson, the goaltender, and the first star was Andrew Hargadon. As we'll try to get Luke Thompson coming over for a quick interview as the celebration continues. But Thompson, what a game. 23 of 25. And Luke's trying to figure out where to go. Thompson will get interviewed. And now we'll head down to Theo, who's with the winning goaltender, 23 of 25, it's Luke Thompson. With our second star, making all but two saves. What a job out there, congratulations. Thanks, I don't even know what to say anymore. You don't even know what to say, does it feel surreal winning the championship at the brick? No, like I've been waiting and nervous. Like honestly, in the semifinals, I felt more nervous in the semifinals than the finals. I like the crowd, it's weird. He loves the crowd. Luke Thompson, what, how good was it that your defense was able to clear a lot of those pucks, those secondary chances in front of you? At the start, it was like not the best, but now it's like perfect and we're clear, breakout, and we have a rush. How great is it to see your team perform like that, putting up a five spot and winning this championship? I like this. These, this team's insane. Like, I don't even know what to say. Well, Luke, congratulations on the victory. Go enjoy the rest of your championship with your team. Thank you. There was Luke Thompson. We'll, what a game for we'll him. We'll go right away, and we'll get to our first star with a goal and assist. Andrew Hargadon. Andrew, you finally woken up with your offense. Congratulations. A goal and assist. How good did it feel to help the team out? It feels really good to win the Brick Tournament. Let's talk about you intercepting that pass to get the Connecticut Junior Rangers on the scoreboard. You saw the pass coming through the middle of the ice. How did you know to get right into that lane? I just saw, I just saw him pass blindly, so I just got the puck, came in and scored. And on that second goal, you make that pass to Kochetov in front of the net. Is that something you practice, skating to the back post and then cutting in front of the defense? Yeah. Well, the coach has certainly had a good game plan for you. Great job working on the defensive side of the offense. Anybody like to say hi to back home? 
I want to say hi to my family and my friends for watching my games. Andrew Hargan in our first star of the game here. The 5-2 win for Connecticut. Go enjoy this championship with your teammates. Thank you. There was Andrew Hargadon with the Connecticut Junior Rangers. And what a game for him. What a tournament for Hargadon. Finishes with two more points to give him six points on the tournament. A goal and an assist. And he was needed to start up the fireworks here for Connecticut as he got the game's first goal, 3.06 into the first period. Unassisted, too, as he mentioned, jumping into that lane, seeing the pass, coming out of the zone, breaking it up, and then scoring the backhand shot around the goaltender in Olsen. Afterwards, Nikita Kochetov was the recipient of a beautiful play by Andrew Hargadon as he driven down the right wing, passed in front, Kochetov knocks it in, and then that got Connecticut out to a 2-0 lead. They would take it into the second period where Maverick Shilgen from Team Minnesota cut the lead back to within one. Kate Christensen and Colton Shatlin grabbing the assists on that goal. And then third period was all Connecticut taking it away. They had the adversity at the end of the second as they gave up the goal to cut the lead to one late two with a minute and 18 seconds left in the second period. But then Connecticut with Jack Brayman on the power play, assisted by Luke Whalen and Ryan Graves. Connecticut then, Luke Whalen assisted by Ryan Graves and Jack Brayman. So two points each for all of that top line. And then they were leaned on in the third period. They went back to work, getting the game's third and fourth goal at four to one. Minnesota would get back within two with five minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Maverick Shilgins, second of the game, assisted by Miles Schillings and Owen Plude. And the Rangers though, the end to end, empty netter. Matthew Selnick found that back of the net just inside the post and made it 5-2. to two. Sealed the deal for Connecticut and they're going to hang two new banners here that say Connecticut Junior Rangers in 2022 for the 2011 birth year and the 2012 birth year. There's now the great ceremony afterwards in the Brick Invitational. We'll see all the teams come out and line up along the boards. Of course, they'll hand out the f second and first team All-Stars. Announced here, you got to think a couple of the names we saw in this game are going to be on it. A Jack Brayman for sure is going to be there. Jack Allgood's going to be on there. Miles Schillings, you have to think he's getting the nod as well on defense. You got Flavio Di Placido of Montreal. Braden Pearsall of Pennsylvania. Brock Manders maybe, Josh Hackett. A lot of great players here in the Brick Invitational. As almost every team now on the ice, and then the really cool part afterwards, after all the trophies and the trophies hoisted, all the teams will come to center. A lot of the kids do jersey swaps, as you see in the NFL, and take home one of their favorite players' jerseys. It's Manitoba Junior Ice getting announced on the ice level now. They're unable to make the playoffs, but finished three and three on the tournament. Now CCM Chicago coming in, also unable to make the finals. CCM Chicago, backed by Matthew Cudio. Another potential for an all-star is Cudio, great tournament as well. Lester selects one in five on the tournament. Picked up two points, won their first game and then lost five straight. CCM Chicago, one and five as well with four points. As we'll have Theo Tuchkaluk going to be joined us with a bunch of the players named to the all-star team. Detroit Junior Red Wings, again, they were one and five as well. That was three teams in the Wigston Division. CCM Chicago, Detroit Junior Red Wings, and Western Selects all finishing at a 1-5 record. That was because Team Minnesota, Toronto Bulldogs, and Toronto Pro Hockey were all 5-1 and one at the top of their division. Minnesota, their lone loss coming to the Toronto Pro Hockey Club. And that was the craziest game of the tournament. As Toronto Pro Hockey, with 30 seconds left, score to get back within one. And then they score again with .5 seconds left to tie the game up at three, and they end up winning four to three in overtime. Now CCM Chicago is getting announced to the ice. We mentioned one and five on the tournament. Montreal, five and one as well. 
Connecticut Junior Rangers, 6-0 and on top of the Styles Division. Team Brick Alberta, 4-2. and Those were their three teams making the postseason from the Styles Division. So I believe that will make it all the teams. Yes, it is. All 14 teams in the Brick Invitational. And definitely the stars of tomorrow. As we mentioned, there was 29 players in Thursday's NHL draft that were drafted into the NHL that played in this tournament back in 2013. As thanks being given here to all the organizers. What a great event. And to have it postponed for basically three years to come back and not only do it with one week and 14 teams, but to double it and do it for two weeks, two age categories, 28 teams. They aren't done yet as well as the female Brick Invitational will take place coming up starting tomorrow. So the Brick Invitational staff are not done. It is a three week long event here happening. And the work that all the volunteers do, the staff do, the organizers do, the sponsors do, is above and beyond what you think is capable for putting on a tournament. West Edmonton Mall, big thanks goes out to them in the Ice Palace. Well, we're gonna announce now the All-Stars and there's no doubt about it. Jack Allgood. He's gonna receive a Jack Hughes autograph stick. And a pair of true F9 skates. Not bad, as we're joined now with Theo, who's got the leading scorer, Jack Allgood. Here with our MVP of the tournament, Jack Allgood. Jack, you get to get a Jack Hughes hockey stick signed by him. How cool is that? It's really cool. He's na I'm named after him. Well, there you have it. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? This tournament, a very good tournament throughout, just unable to get the final finish there against Connecticut. What was the best part of the tournament for you and your team? Uh, just beating just being one of the best teams in the tournament. Obviously, Connecticut's one of the best teams in the country, but it's cool to be here. We talked about the chemistry in your team. How special was it to have this team throughout the winter and into the Brick Tournament? It's really cool because we have a lot of really good players on our team. Our goalies played amazing today. Certainly did. You had a great tournament throughout. Again, eight goals and nine assists. That's the most points we've seen in quite a while. Thank you. Jack Allgood, the tournament MVP. We'll be going ahead back up to you there, Roy. Tournament MVP Jack Allgood is now we're going to be back down with Theo, who's got the forward of the tournament. I do believe is what he was announced as. No doubt about it. It's Flavio Di Placido who's here with Theo. Here with Flavio Di Placido. Flavio, congratulations. Tremendous job throughout the week. Nine goals in the tournament, the leading score. How does it feel to finally finish up the tournament? What are your thoughts? It feels amazing. I'm so happy for myself. Um, I had a great team in front of me, and yeah. You played the first week, you now played the second week. How enjoyable to play two tournaments back to back. I enjoyed it, the two te my two teams were amazing. Um, yeah. What's, what's your favorite part of this tournament and why did you enjoy it so much? Everything. There you have it, simply words, everything. We'll send that back to you, Rory. Thanks so much as they're announcing that the second Team All-Stars. As Montreal's got a pair of them, it's Mason Curry, the goaltender, and Quincy Fontaine on defense. The other defenseman, Miles Schillings of Minnesota. Braden Pearsall of Team Pennsylvania. Now the Toronto Bulldogs, Matthew Dodick. What a tournament he had as well. As the second forward. And Kale Nickel of Manitoba. They'll be the second team all-star forward. So Pearsall, Dodick and Nickel, Schillings and Fontaine, and Curry are your five second team all-star here at the 33rd annual Brick Invitational. They'll all receive rocket gear. Great training device for athletes and everyone alike. So Jackson Zinner from the BC Junior Canucks grabbing the goaltender 
of the first team All-Star. And he was our the pinball wizard. We coined him as his ability down low with his pad work, his lower body strength, his puck control, rebound, direction, and Zinner is the goaltender to first team all-star. The defenseman in Simpson for Manitoba. From Team Brick, Alberta, Cohen St. Louis is your second defenseman of the first team all-star. Team Brick, Alberta, tough loss in the semifinals of the playoffs, one nothing to the Toronto Bulldogs. And Cohen St. Louis. Flavio Di Placido is going to be your first team all-star. Jack Allgood from Minnesota, the tournament MVP. No doubt about it. I think Connecticut's got to get a nod as well. And Jack Brayman of the Connecticut Junior Rangers, the champion Connecticut Junior Rangers. So Brayman, all good, and Di Placido up front, St. Louis and Simpson on defense, and Zinner, the goaltender, are your first team all-stars here at the Brick Invitational. As we'll welcome back in now Theo Tutkaluk, who had a couple great interviews there. How pumped uh, was the goaltender and Luke Thompson to talk to you there. He was kind of beyond <laughs> words, but great character in the goaltender and the championship goaltender as well. You know what? Uh, just talks about how impressive he is with his team, not taking the credit at all. How much he loved this team, playing with them. Truly amazing. And, uh, and there he is, Luke Thompson, getting the playoff MVP. No doubt about it. Yeah, speechless. He was absolutely tremendous today. He did a great job doing what he needed to do, backstopping this Junior Rangers championship. <laughs> Thompson, a big smile there as he receives his trophy from Jamal Mayers. And it's funny, when I'm talking to Jack Allgood as well, mm. Jack used stick in his hand. He says, I'm named after him. I'm like, well, there you have it. Both of them the same namesake. And they're going to announce now the runner-up trophies in Team Minnesota. And you talk about one of the powerhouse teams. It was Minnesota, one of the best you've seen in a while. He had Austin Jarvie, second in the tournament, scoring with 16 points. Jack Allgood, first in tournament scoring and the MVP with 18 points. Miles Schillings on the second defensive, or second team All-Star on defense, seven assists in that tournament. You could have picked Jack Kaiser to be involved in there as well. The goaltenders, O'Brockton and Olsen were fantastic. And then the almost playoff hero, if Minnesota would have got it done, is, is Shogun. Four Ma goals in two games, no doubt about it. You know what, we, Maverick Shogun said that during his... Uh, interview there the team really rallied around everybody just couldn't get enough in there yes this Minnesota team from top to bottom a very strong team defensively and on the offensive side of things and of course one of their players a 2013 birth year Miles Schillings on defense who was an all-star as well he'll be back next year on team Minnesota he should be uh, I would I would not keep him off my roster mm -hmm. that's for sure well, and a lot of these players, of course, they play on their same club team, the Minnesota Blades. There's only two players that don't on the GTS Elite. One is Chase Williamson, and the other is Tate Ulrich. Other than that, everyone's on the same team. So you can see the consistency for Team Minnesota. Consistency and the chemistry proved dividends for this team to get all the way to the championship game. And kudos to them, because we've talked about that with this Minnesota team and how important it is to have them throughout the winter and into this spring-summer season. Their top line combined for 47 points throughout the tournament, not including today in the championship game. Just incredible the amount of goal scoring and the power offensively they had on those three players. They're the highest scoring team in the tournament, 35 goals for in the round robin action. And they won their, their semifinals 4 to 1. And two goals here in the finals. 41 goals for Team Minnesota. It's Chase Williamson coming over to grab his trophy. And they should all be absolutely proud of themselves for a fantastic tournament. 
Oh, without question. I mean, you talk about how many games these, th these boys had to play throughout the week and then making sure that, you know, they're well rested, they stay hydrated, they're ready to play the next game. And you know what? The in performances they put on the ice are second to none. The coaches now coming over, and it was always entertaining seeing the fan bases and the coaching staff of Team Minnesota and what they were going to drum up in terms of wardrobe throughout the event. No, they came here to win. Coach S talked about that yesterday. Just, you know, the outfits were one thing, but the performance on the ice by the players was another, and they did a tremendous job throughout the week, as mentioned. They're now going to be awarded the championship trophies to Team Connecticut. And you talk about a tournament. Well, they didn't lose. 8-0. Perfect run for Connecticut. Just the one win they had in overtime. But nonetheless, a unblemished mark for the Connecticut Junior Rangers as they deserve that from start of Monday right until Sunday at this time. And both goaltenders were from, you talk about defense, but then maybe flew under the radar. But Christian Talapala, he'll receive his trophy. Six assists. And Christian Talapia had a great uh, run the entire round Rob and we talk about gap closure we talk about moving the puck forward to his forwards he did both of those with great ease and he does find the open ice to skate up and join the play and a good looking shot from the blue line too Jaden Wyden Jack Brayman Fitzgerald Brown coming into the play Jaden Wyden another one that you talk about the top line getting a lot of the points but Jaden Wyden generates offense and plays so well defensively as well he's fast he's Shaky and sneaky in transition, in mixes, seems to find lanes and get out of it and create offense, and a great tournament for him. We talked to some of the both players there, Jake or Andrew Hargaden especially, about going to the back post as something they practiced there throughout the season when they could have this team together. The other thing they also worked on talking to the players beforehand, the outlet pass, finding the loose puck, making sure that when they don't have the puck, they're looking to receive that pass to be in that open ice so that they can then move together as a unit out of the zone. Well, they're so good defensively. They allowed six goals throughout the entire tournament and two more today. So eight goals against in eight games. Their defensive work and their attention to detail away from the offense, which translates to their offense eventually, but it starts in their own zone and they're so good in their own zone taking care of it. They work the breakout passes crispy, crisply, pardon me, cleanly and that's what translates to the offense that you saw they didn't need to score 47 goals to win they're holding opponents to one goal a game that transitional game they had was superb and made the game for them come they brought the game and the game plan to the other team all the time they didn't have to adapt the team to the other team they didn't have to adapt their team strategy they knew what was important to do how to get things done and they stuck to the game plan throughout the entire week six goals against two again in the championship that's a very good defensive group that we're looking at holding the championship mugs. Well, and I mean, if you're gonna get one goal a game against, you gotta give credit to your goaltenders as well. And how good was Luke Thompson and Nathan Zakowicz? Tandem, fantastic. I mean, we saw Luke Thompson perform here today on Sunday, but Zakowicz the same way, doing the backstopping for this Junior Rangers program. They both are sound netminders, doing what they need to do to control their rebounds, move the puck to the side, and what a tremendous job by, done by both number 50 and number 31. Now the Connecticut Junior Rangers, back to back to back, 2019. Now back here after the return of a three year wait. Looked like the wait was worthwhile for Connecticut. Going with the hardware home week one and now week two. And they get to hoist the big brick trophy here after some pictures and ceremonial uh, pretendings of sipping out of the mugs. I wonder what's going to be inside those mugs, Rory. Sorry, pardon me, what was that? I'm trying to decide what they're going to, I, if it was up to me, what would I put in that mug to celebrate <laughs> what I'm sipping on? I know that I've seen Skittles, I've seen milk, yeah. I've seen 7-Up, I've seen some libations of adult form to the Stanley Cup. cereal? Cereal. I've, when I won mine, I had Fruit Loops and milk. <laughs> so this was, it wasn't a brick tournament, but when we won our champion, my only championship as a teenager, it was Fruit Loops and milk. So we'll see what happens. As all teams come to center ice, the Connecticut Junior Rangers have gone back to back to back here at the Brick Invitational. They will host the trophy, and next year will come in as three-time defending champions. And with that, we say congratulations to all the teams and a wonderful job done by all the teams involved representing their crowds. The organization, the 
people that put this together, the volunteers from everyone here at ASTV, for producer Cody, for Mark Kincaid, Theo Glum Mumford, thank you so much for tuning in alongside the 33rd annual Brick Invitational, and it belongs to, to Connecticut.